chart. I've never done whole parts. They take little tiny pieces. There won't even be a scar. I think I found the problem. Oh, come on, you're the doctor. Everyone, lights out and quiet. Well, welcome back to the Media Morgue, folks, where movies come to be examined. I'm Justin, uh, alongside my fellow surgeons of the cinema. Yeah, I'm Danny. I'm Zach. I'm Josh Trank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Wes. Each episode, we review two films, one that's popular and one that's a little faded for and or forgotten or any permutation of the three. And we try to find a connecting thread so that you feel a little safer about broadening your cinematic horizons. But before we do the reviews, we have the news. Uh, So, of course, each of us has brought something to talk about today. We're going to go to Dan first. Well, um, that new uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie has a rating. It's rated mm, R. Great. You could have seen that coming. Uh, they're keeping the same title as the original movie, uh, which is, you know, like what everybody is going to be doing moving forward with mm. these franchises, because that's what David Gordon Green did with Halloween. It's just mm. a recognizable title. Uh, right, so right. fuck putting numbers in front of things anymore, <laughs> or, you know, little subtitles, mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, so, yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is what it's called. It's R-rated. That's and it's also it. it's also become popular, uh, Dan, to like I think among movie fans to like refer to reboots by the year they came out as well. Yes. Yeah, so saying yeah. TCM twenty two so is going to be yeah, yeah it's going to be a thing. Yeah, or Rob Zombie Halloween. It actually has attached. Um, it's funny that you just said that because Evil Dead twenty thirteen, the director of that is the producer on this new TCM. And they're using like old seventies lenses, and they're, oh. and they're like shooting in a way that's trying to mimic the aesthetic of the original movie, which is that's the cool. last one in, in 2013 with Alexander Daddario. That was supposed to be like the real sequel, but it kind of was dead on arrival. It just looked really too clean, kind of flat. Looked kind of like a TV movie. So they're yeah. they're mm. realizing now that the cinematography of the original is a strong suit and something that they need to try and replicate what i find so interesting yeah. about this uh trend of horror movies because we get a we get a new horror movie trend every 10 years of mm-hmm. like we mm-hmm. you know found footage which we're going to talk about later today and now we're torture doing porn. torture porn and now we're getting uh like the reboot slash sequel to the original thing which yeah. is like you mm-hmm. you go straight like you go straight to the original batch and you're like everything else didn't happen this everything happened else is and i think you know what yeah. i think will be the next i think they'll do a nightmare one and I think they'll. I, I hope so because Robert England has said a million times that he would love to come back as Freddy. But it's other people telling him that he's too old. But also, but also, I think uh, the thing about Nightmare that makes it weird is Nightmare has more good sequels yeah. than any of the Night- other. Nightmare ones. Three is Nightmare maybe three the best is great. One. New Nightmare. Is yeah, New Nightmare. Um, so yeah, but I think Nightmare will be. Well, the next I, one. I, I need to bring New Nightmare on the show. Mm-hmm. I think. Yes. I think it would be a fun conversation because yes. it's it's not a nightmare movie in the traditional it's sense. Not. It's like. Man, it's also I, pro, it's also it. a proto scream like it's like yeah, scream yeah, yeah. but like before it was, scream. It was scream a couple mm. years before by Wes Craven. I was gonna say Wes, yeah. um, the, the what you're talking about is is not even just exclusive to horror. I think it's just part and parcel with the the whole nostalgia surge that we've been getting mm-hmm. for the past mm-hmm. ten years, I where agree. everything is being revisited because. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're just in a very self-referential period in movie making right now. Um, so I, I think that like that horror horror is experiencing a resurgence because of that, because we're looking at these old classics and saying like, maybe we got it yeah. right the first time, and all we need to do is like slap some different effects on here and mm-hmm. and 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 get some of the old team back together and see if we can recapture. What's that. a good example of uh, outside of? Uh, I mean, I, I, say, I can think of uh, the Jurassic movies, uh, the, oh, yeah, okay. uh, the Incredible Hulk uh, with Edward Norton. That's a little and, older. And we're talking about stuff yeah. that is a reboot oh, that recons everything yeah. else. Yeah, in terms of like, well, no, because I mean, I mean, just following up on like whether it's like erasing a bunch of sequels or if yeah. it's just saying like, here's a new entry in this thing that you haven't seen in 20 years. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Years. Star mm. Wars, right? I mean, like yeah. Star Wars, does the Star Wars was kind of was dead for, I mean, not dead, but it was just like TV and comics. Yeah. And then they said, Hey, yeah. let's make a sequel uh, 40 years later. I, I think Star Wars actually might be the uh, ground zero for that because I think people realized that what the way nostalgia works is you have to have a piece of what you liked before. Mm. You can't just wash everything away. Like, 
when we had mm-hmm. reboots in the early 2000s, like with Friday the 13th and Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. Those didn't work because the original recipe wasn't there. Right. I do you know like I mean? 2003 Texas Chainsaw. It is I'm good. I also, I, like, I, I, also like like, I also like 2009 Friday the 13th. I don't yeah. think it's a terrible movie. So is that the one with, with uh, is that the one with with Rorschach as as Freddy Krueger? That, that's that's nightmare. That's nightmare on Elm Street. That one is. Oh, horrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is that 2009? Yeah. That is 2010. That's 2010. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Wow, wow. Giant. Rookie mistake. Yeah. Oh, he's he's um he's not awful in that role, he but isn't. he's he's doing a thing where uh he's he's trying to imitate like what a burn victim would sound like, yeah. which is not what Robert Englund was originally doing. So he just um. It's hard to, to pin down. He, it, he just look. I haven't even caught you yet, and it, it's like almost like yeah, difficult to listen yeah. to him speak. The weird know? thing about it is also that the the reason why nightmare, or the original nightmare works, is because a lot of the darker stuff isn't said but is assumed or implied. Yeah. But then in the they new never one, even say that he and, molested kids. Exactly. They never. Say and then that. in the new one, they're like, he's a child molester, yeah. which kind of like has to be grittier. You, yeah. It has to be literal. It has, to be, it has to yeah. be like literal, and it's like the reason why Wes Craven is such a good horror director is because he's able to make the really dark stuff implied you know what yeah. i mean scream mm-hmm. works because it's not like this is about school shooters but it is no, exactly. you know what i mean yeah. so so that's yeah. why i think the that reboot doesn't work mm. specifically it's yeah, ironic sure. we're going to be talking about chronicle which we are. is very much we'll get there very much. you said that last week and i didn't even <laughs> i didn't really right. take it seriously but it exactly ah yeah. uh, yes uh so my news is the Love, Death, and Robots Volume Two trailer, which I am cool. very excited about. I don't know. Have you any of you guys watched the first? I've watched, I haven't, but, but you, I, I do remember that you recommended it, Zach. Mm-hmm. So I will try and uh, check it out before that new season. The, the only thing I, I did watch that trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, the main thing I picked up on is they used uh, that track from Hereditary. Yes, I, I just saw that. Yeah, up in the treehouse. The the whoa, I don't even know how to do it, but oh, it's oh, it's you. in this uh, trailer. Yeah, it's it could have been like um, temp music that they just didn't make very different, or it's the actual track. I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, I saw a bunch of comments on YouTube think. about that. Yeah, mm. Wes, did you have you seen it? I have not, but it's it seems like something I would love. Like, it, yeah. isn't it like it's, isn't it like yeah. produced by Fincher? Point. Yes. Yeah. It's a sci-fi anthology and it's like, the, it's so non-committal because, you know, obviously mm. each episode is its own world and there are some that are as short as like six minutes long, maybe even shorter. I'm pretty sure that's the shortest one though. How many episodes are there? Oh gosh. I, there's maybe mm, 13. You said yeah. They're super short. There's maybe like 13 episodes and they vary between like six minutes and then like 25 minutes, I think is the longest. Um, mm. But it just has some of like some beautiful uh, imagery. And I think each one comes from, I don't know if it's animated by a different country or the story itself is from a different it country. Like yeah. Some um, of it is like anime and some of it is like 3D animation. Yeah. So all the animation is super different and, and the stories are like just really unique and, and just so different from each other. There's uh, a lot yeah. of great stuff. So I recommend everybody watch that watch like one episode. If you can, it, takes like literally less than an hour of your time to just watch one episode and then get hooked on it so yeah, that's my I, news uh, I've, I've i've watched uh no it's a, it's a good wreck i've watched a fair amount of the first season um and i'm, I'm looking through the episodes that i've completed now and mm-hmm. just like some memories flooding back yeah a lot of really interesting ideas in short form which is like you know there's there's always space for that because uh, people are like you said they're very we are very uh stingy and conscious about our time especially when it comes to what we consume yeah so um mm-hmm. yeah i'll definitely be looking out for the second season because i think that these mm-hmm. are a lot of fun they're like bite-sized you can just kind of you could really binge the whole first season in like me, while you're cooking good. dinner yeah <laughs> yeah that's like the pull is that yeah. they're so bite-sized mm-hmm. they, exactly yeah you can yeah. watch it on the train um, wes um i guess speaking of reboots uh there you go we got a trailer for the new West Side Story um, th- that is directed by Spielberg and the starring Rachel Ziegler um, and a couple other folks. Just a quick trigger warning for discussions of sexual assault because we're going to have to get into it briefly. But um, this, the other star of the, of the of the movie is Ansel Elgort, who was recently um, coming yes. to fire with, with a lot of uh, sexual misconduct allegations, um, which is one of the reasons why this was pushed back mm. a year. You know, it was it was the COVID okay. thing, and then also because I was going to say, didn't they know when they were shooting? Well, the issue is such a long time. The ago. issue is that I think 
so it was a, it was a couple things. It was it was pushed back in the in the time when we weren't sure if we were going to be able to go back to movie theaters right. in December. But also the allegations came out right as the press cycle was supposed to begin, and they were I guess the studio was like push it back. I almost um, remember that being like ancient history, but I yeah. guess it was like a recent. It, it's a it's a it's a couple months old, but the movie itself. Here's the thing. I'm sure it's going to be great. Spielberg is a great director, of course. I mean, who am I saying that to? I don't know why we need another West Side Story, especially if the choreography is the same, the era is the same. Yeah. The only thing I could think of is that you're getting actual Latinx actors instead of brown yeah. face. Yeah, yeah. But like, right. other than that, like, what, what's yeah. the point? It, well, it looks it's like uh, I, I watched make it look newer, you know. But um, yeah, yeah I remember yeah. being in high school and like watching like musicals and stuff, and like we would watch West Side Story, and that was like the oldest one they would show, and it just like that movie's like beautiful. I don't know, like like I love stuff that looks like that. The film it was shot on, I mean, it's just very like mm-hmm. glossy and like larger than life looking. It's it's hard to replicate that. To to your point, Danny, it, I was going to ask. This looks like it's shot on some sort of film stock as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I watched does, the does. trailer. And I haven't seen it. So. Yeah, it Just looks like it's on some sort trailer. of millimeter. Um, it, it does look but like yeah, it. I mean, West Side is a, is a classic mm-hmm. uh, story that um, obviously in itself is riffing on Romeo and Juliet, yeah, but yes. uh, has then also been riffed on a bunch of other times, uh, mm-hmm. A Bronx Tale. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I'm sure there's like a bunch of other examples. And um, yeah, I mean, I actually have not seen the original West Side Story movie ever. Um, I have seen stage productions of it a few like a, mm-hmm. or a one big one and then like a few uh like clips from some others um but yeah we're, we're that's another trend that's big is is stage adaptations uh we're looking yeah. at in the heights coming out later this summer oh, which i'm yeah, pretty same excited city. for so excited yeah. yeah because uh a lot of it was filmed in and around my neighborhood hey um so that'd be fun to, to look at and i, I really well, do like that play yeah what, what i will say though about west side story is uh Rachel Ziegler has become like a, a, a major like Gen Z celebrity I'm look, just I'm off of uh, she's, yeah, she's like, I was about to do this. She was passed right out of high school for this. Uh, wow. She's a great singer. She has a lot of singing videos on, on Twitter. She's an amazing okay. singer. She's like a personality. I mean, like fame. I guess you can kind of become an A-list. That's the thing. Like a, she, 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 the movie hasn't even uh, dropped and she was already like cast as one of the major characters in Shazam. Columbia. So it's like. Yeah. People are celebrities before we even see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nineteen years uh, old. Nineteen That's years crazy. old. Uh, wow. And if she and if she kills this role, like she's gonna shoot into the stratosphere. Sure so like, yeah. And, and she and she sounds great. So I'm sure she's and she went to acting school. You know, we're all. She's also students. already cast. Cast in Shazam. In Shazam. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shazam two. Oh, okay. Wait, yeah. Do you know what she's playing? Uh, the hidden role. I don't know. Freaking Billy oh, Batson's okay. wife or something. Probably a big know. scary. Probably uh, Billy Batson's uh, love interest and or villain. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Um, well, as for my news, uh, speaking of superheroes, just wanted to talk real quick about the Shang Chi teaser that was released last week on. I think uh, principal... didn't see that either. <laughs> wow. Simu uh, Liu's birthday. Uh, the actor playing Shang Chi. They oh. put out a teaser. Uh, they released the poster and they said the teaser was coming next week, but then they did their Marvel thing and they surprised everyone. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I you know when they announced that Shang Chi was coming, um, mm-hmm. what I was interested, what really keyed me in was the Legend of the Ten Rings being the subtitle yeah. because then I knew okay, so we're getting the Mandarin mm. in like a real way now. And there are, there have been some that say that they think uh, Shang Chi could do for um, Iron Man three what WandaVision mm-hmm. did for Age of Ultron in that mm-hmm. it causes people to appreciate some of what it was doing more after the fact. Although, and, I, and I'm someone who likes both those movies anyway. Like, I like Iron Man 3 fine, and I like Age of Ultron a lot. <laughs> so um, I was never like, I never needed convincing. But I think with, uh, we'll see how much Shang-Chi even cares about acknowledging Iron Man 3 because... Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to really get into the Mandarin thing, but I do want to say that they should have just taken with the third iron man did and rolled with it and not kept mm. hinting at like a real mandarin being because like who cares you know you, you yeah already, yeah like, had the opportunity to do this more obscure villain and you decided to upend it and you know put it on its head uh so just leave it like that and in right. every year well, and, 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 that the mandarin being like a real guy who's out there and to yeah me, that's just not very right. engaging well i i one thing i will <laughs> say about the mandarin that 
the director seems to be. Uh, I think his, the director is uh, Daniel Dustin Cretton. I, I believe that's his name. Yes. Forgive me if that's not his name. Uh, he did. He did Just Mercy and Short Term Twelve, I think. Uh, but but um, he talked about the Mandarin as in the comics as a racial stereotype and the fact that he wanted to kind mm-hmm. of deconstruct mm-hmm. that and also the fact mm-hmm. that in the comics Shang Chi's dad is Fu Manchu, which is like. Mm-hmm. Just very bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just yeah, a very, yeah. very bad. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So I appreciate that at least if they're yeah. going to use the Mandarin, they're going to confront what the Mandarin was in the comics, which was a racial stereotype. Fu Manchu doesn't come from Marvel, right? No, but they bought the rights to okay. it. No, 60s. no. Yeah, it's it's yeah, like a Flash it, Gordon thing at least, oh, if not older is, than that. It is very um, strange. I was going to say uh, before before. Zach, we hear from you. I was going to say that um, the, I think that the issue that Marvel was facing at the time is the same issue that came back up with the Ancient One. Is the same issue that came back up with Iron Fist, which mm. is that we have these we have these characters that are either Asian and a stereotype, or they're not Asian and maybe they could have been. Mm. And so, how do we how do we wrestle with that? With mm. the Ancient One, they you could argue that they like didn't make the right decision at all really bumbled the ball they, on they that one. Really yeah. yeah at the same time it's like um, iron tilda swinton you can you can pretty much cast her as like anything mm. like even like and people will just be like okay i i guess i'll accept yeah. that and she's not and and they made the ancient one a title more than like this is one person so she had a teacher probably at some point that could have been and they also like they made Doctor Strange look racist in the movie by right. assuming that the old Tibetan man was yeah, yeah. The, ancient the ancient one and not the woman who was in front of him. So racist and sexist. Kind of like racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's but um, I think that was part of the, the calculus with Mandarin is, um, you know, uh, OK, maybe we can cast someone who has some gravitas to him. We cast Ben Kingsley, who is an Indo-British mm-hmm. actor. So he is Asian. Mm. Of a story, he's South Asian, but if we don't want to go hardcore with recreating the stereotype, maybe we can s- navigate yeah. that. And I was ready for Ben Kingsley to be the Mandarin. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I was. And then when he's it's he's hard he's to tell where he's even from in the movie, though. Right. Yeah. They so don't have any Asian? Because he said like he had he had surgery, so you didn't even know what the extent of that I, is. Iron those Iron Man movies in retrospect have a lot of troubling Middle Ooh. Eastern. Uh, things about you're them. absolutely right but zach what did what did you think about the trailer i liked it um i thought i i was extremely triggered by the san francisco bus scene <laughs> I mean, not really because i mean i i just associate marvel and san francisco with like ant-man 2 i think it is yeah. and oh, i yeah. absolutely never want to see that movie ever again in my whole life so wow. seeing wow. a sequence like that was was disturbing for me um with aquafina at the helm of that bus and then being like yeah. i think we make a great team i was like there's marvel thank you marvel yeah um yeah, yeah. but it had some really cool things like there, there was this one shot of like these two people fighting in like this forest and it was beautiful forest yeah Yeah. um and that's crazy that 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 doesn't even look like marvel yeah exactly that was exciting um i i yeah i like some of those i i thought it was really cool just him going up to to that wooden pillar and just like putting his hand on it and then putting his fist like through like that there's some really cool shots in there um i know nothing about shang uh shang chi as a character from the comics um but i'm really excited for the yeah, possibility as a, as a little as a little bit of a so a couple of things to pick up on what you just said uh, as we wrap up here number one the cinematography is by bill pope mm. um yeah. who is known for his work on the matrix mm. uh trilogy okay. spider-man 2 spider-man 3 oh, uh wow. the world's end and alita battle angel among a lot of other stuff yeah so, oh um he's, he's a very decorated uh, yeah, good, good, good. cinematographer especially for movies like this yeah um I, you can kind of see uh, uh the film's influences specifically with that sequence you talked about zach it looks very crouching tiger yeah um and i think that that lady that he's fighting could be michelle yo who's in this cast and she's uh she was the principal in uh crouching tiger yeah um as far as shang chi himself yeah he is Marvel's Bruce Lee, and pretty literally, yes. uh, he debuted a few months uh, after Bruce Lee died, uh, and uh, then An- Iron Fist made his debut a year later. So Shang Chi predates him by a year, uh, but he just never was as famous. 
um, as Iron Fist got. Mm. And so that was also part of the thing when Iron Fist came out and people were like, Iron Fist should be an Asian, you know, character. I was like, well, you, you could just make a Shang-Chi movie mm. because yeah. that guy's here. And I'm. And it's not like we can't have more Asian people, but it's like, I think people were saying that not knowing who Shang-Chi, who Shang-Chi was. Right. So the fact that Iron Fist had that abysmal Netflix series, especially the first season, Good God. and now Shang-Chi is getting a, a full budget um, uh, uh, motion picture uh, is, is pretty great. Um, so looking forward to it. It's not like Hope- the budget was diminutive. It just, they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. <laughs> yeah. 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 That too. I mean, they, they rushed that first season. Like there was, it was all the news about how like, uh, Finn Ryder, yeah. whatever his name he is. He didn't even get in shape. Cause the yeah, he was, he was learning Finn fight Ryder. scenes on the day of great. like, just, yeah, just yeah. terrible. Awesome. Um, oh, yeah, boy. but we'll, we'll see how it turns out. They have Tony, the great Tony, uh, Leung as the Mandarin. Yeah. Um, and hey, did uh, he we'll kill him in anything commercial? Because I only very associate strange. him with Wong Kar Wai yeah, and yeah, the Asian guy. art house cinema. That's like so crazy that he's in this. That, that Marvel guy. check, I listen. Oh, no, yeah, I mean, get I, the Marvel I, bag. I do not know for sure, but I am quite certain that that Marvel bag will drag Robert De Niro one day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Robert De Niro and Denzel Washington will be collecting Daniel that Marvel. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, you know, you know who it's going to get first is Al Pacino, man. Oh I'm yeah, gonna get God help us! Well, they were, well, let me just, tell you, I'm Mephisto. <laughs> well, I was about to say who's gonna play Mephisto. I feel like I feel like at some point, whenever we get around to doing an uh, MCU movie as a popular movie, we have to we have to just play a game where we cast famous actors that wouldn't be in Marvel movies as Marvel parts because it, oh, everyone's gonna be in Marvel eventually. Well, stay tuned for Black Widow. Meryl Streep uh, is coming. coming. Oh, we're on this uh, Marvel bag uh, train. The best director of last night, Chloe, Chloe Zhao, Zhao. right? Yeah, Chloe she Zhao. is directing the Eternals. Yes. So she's the yeah. second um, woman, I believe, to ever win best director. The first woman of color. First woman of color. First woman. And I mean, so Martin Scorsese would be thrilled until yeah. you tell him the next thing she's yeah. doing is a Marvel movie. <laughs> it just kind of, just kind of. Yeah. Oh, Marty. Yeah. Um, but that does right. it for our new segment. We'll take a brief break and come back with our first a movie of today, our Consensus Choice 2020 Netflix release, Project Power. Hey, hey. Stay tuned. Yeah. Project Power! Here we are. Yeah, welcome back. Uh, hope, you, hope you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one they've been streaming for. Uh, as, as we said, we're talking about the 2020 Netflix release, Project Power, starring Jamie Foxx, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Dominic Fishback, directed by Henry Joost, or Hoost, probably, and Ariel Schulman. Um, Danny, uh, what's this movie about, man? Um, if people get animal powers, uh, which includes turning yourself into an ice man and a fire person, you know, classic animal powers, and it's up to stop it from happening. Exactly. Power. Um, so yeah, Project Power, uh, came out in 2020. I remember watching it pretty much when it came out, it had some pretty heavy promotion behind it. Um, yeah, it did. and, yes. uh, I, I, I watched it. I liked it, and then 45 minutes passed, and I was like, no. I don't like this movie very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, 20, it came out it was, last, it year, last year. It was during the okay. quarantine. Yeah. I didn't even know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you say uh, you we'll were see. a stan before the 45 minutes passed, Justin, or, or no? Not a stan. I just, I was <laughs> like more, I was I was like easier on it. And then and then I kept thinking about it. I was like, well, no, there's so much that doesn't that doesn't So much work. for this movie. Um, but yeah, okay. what were your initial impressions? We'll start with you, Dan. Uh, it, it goes down easy when you're watching it. Um, mm-hmm. there's, there's weird little things with it, but like as a whole, it's fine. I mean, it's not offensively like bad or anything. I think it's yeah. got strong performances. I think the no name actors really hold their own with, mm-hmm. you know, the mm-hmm. likes of Jimmy Fox and just Gordon Levitt. The, uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't really work for me. Um, mm-hmm. maybe it's like a budget constraint thing, but we don't really get like a clear like showcase of what these powers can let people do until maybe like more than halfway through the movie 
And mm, the act, yeah. they're always finding ways to like cut around having really clear action, um, which is always just kind of a letdown. But mm-hmm. I, I, I did think, like, I don't know, it, I, I wouldn't say I loved it or even really liked it. Uh, I would just say it's fine. Yeah, I, uh, I, I liked it. It's my opinion of this movie is kind of weird. I liked it. I liked things about it. I thought the visualization of uh, of the powers was pretty cool. Just like showing like their their pupils dilating and like their skin, mm. like the pores opening and steam coming through it. Um, J- Joseph Gordon Levitt makes the most questionable decisions I have ever seen I was anybody make. About why he was like even the guy at all doing? Like, yeah, he, you he's, forget he's, he's in the, the movie. Like, he has that monologue and he's like, they're just going to test on the people in New Orleans and think they can yeah. get away with it. Like the white cop who's standing up. He's for just... That should have been. No <laughs> yeah. It, it, it. As much as yeah. I like to see him and stuff and it's been a while. Right. Mm. It, it was nice to see. I love Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I, li- I like seeing him and stuff. It, it was just his character was was just really strange. His relationship with the girl was also questionable. Um mm. I think the finale really craps the bed for me. Like the the finale, the things that happen in the finale are just insane. Um, and we'll get into yeah, that no. more with the plot. But I think overall, Jamie Foxx is a lot of fun to watch. Um, Dominique Fishback is also great, and I think there are mm-hmm. some cool elements to it. But yeah, the, the 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 plot in general just felt very like generic. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. it's superpowers, but they're drugs, and so there's drug dealer. You know, it's. I don't know. Um, I, I liked like the way it was coming together in the first half. I thought it would be like an anti superhero superhero movie, you know? Mm, like yeah. um J- Jamie Foxx was that part where he's like at the gas station and, and he's like making faces at the kid and stuff mm-hmm. and he's like wiping sweat and blood or whatever off of him. I was like, Okay, this is kind of like gritty. Like this doesn't really yeah. seem like it's gonna be like a, a safe thing and then it became very safe, so I was wrong. It became yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, um, this movie has the strangest cast on the planet. So you mm-hmm. have like Dominique Fishback, who is like, I'm convinced is going to be like a giant. Like she's already giant, but I feel like she's going to be like what a top. She top she's was in Judas and the Black Messiah. Okay. And I'm I'm sure I'm sure in the next three or four years she's going to get it like a super high profile thing, mm. and we're going to be like, mm. oh, she's the biggest person in the world because she's Where great, she's very charismatic. Yeah. She has a face that she could be like 15, 18, 25. You know what I mean? She just has a youthful right. look. And she's really good. So so um other there's her, her two dads, Joseph Gordon Levitt and uh Jimmy Fox. So they're great. Right. That little trio. And then there's just the strangest supporting like Machine Gun Kelly. As uh, soon as he uh, the cool. first scene he steps out, I'm like, don't Tell me this stars Machine Gun Kelly. It's, I'm fucking turn it off. I don't want to look at his face. It's Machine Gun Kelly, Courtney B. Vance, <laughs> Casey Neistat. Oh my god, that pissed me off are, too. Are, it's just such a strange, <laughs> just such a strange gaggle of people to it's, be in this it's movie. Got two of, of the people with the least enjoyable faces to look at in the world. Casey yeah. Neistat <laughs> and they're both like in this movie. Well, but but like I, I don't know. I agree. I mean, I love I love it when and this used to happen more before Marvel took over the world. But we used to get a lot of non IP superhero movies. Yes, and they were mm-hmm. always interested in how grotesque superpowers could be, rather mm-hmm. than the aspirational Marvel DC stuff. And I love that. I love how like your body doesn't adapt to the power. So if you get ice powers, mm-hmm. you're you're going to freeze to death. Or if like you get fire powers, the skin <laughs> on your face is going to burn. You're yeah, like, everyone yeah. has bad side effects. You, you know what I mean? The three main characters. But, well, that's, well, that's well, that's well, well, that's an issue with writing. But I think I think mm-hmm. I think yeah. the idea of the movie is cool. I think the acting. I think there's scenes where Jamie Fox is just casually an amazing actor. Like there's a scene yeah. where he takes yeah. the the drink and he walks in and then immediately changes his posture so he looks drunk mm-hmm. and then walks in just yeah. seamlessly. I thought that that was funny that that's yeah. how we got into that top secret Very sci-fi party. He just Listen, like, yeah. the writing, <laughs> we, will, the we will talk about the writing because this writer has the most like exciting credits coming up out of anybody in this movie. And I think the writing is the weakest part. He's doing the Batman and he's wow. doing the Mega Man movie. Okay. <laughs> like, what, like, what? What? How did you get, how did you watch this movie and go... The writing, yes. Who'd you guys cast as Mega Man? <laughs> uh, uh, Noah Centineo, because he's a himbo. The- We're dropping a spoiler warning now, officially. If you mm-hmm. want to see Project Power for yourself, then come back and listen to our thoughts on it. 
uh, go ahead, but you have our initial impressions. I'm going to go through the plot summary and we'll stop to dissect the parts that we thought were uh, a little bit smelly. Great. So in near future New Orleans, a mysterious distributor offers a free supply of power, a pill that grants various superpowers for five minutes to a group of drug dealers, including <laughs> including one named Newt. Um, I guess, actually, before we get too far, let me just uh, ask a question, because I don't know if I'm dumb or if the movie didn't explain this. Do the pills have power or do they activate a power? You, you crack them them and they light up and then, yeah. So, then so your DNA there, for five minutes. here's what I think happens, Justin. And I've been trying to figure this out the whole time because Joseph Gordon-Levitt has a weird line in the beginning where he's like, if you have enough good in you, the powers will be good, which seems what? like mystical. Yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, if you have some good in you, you'll get a power. So but we'll good see. is in your DNA. I missed I that entirely. Dude. Okay, so I think. What about what, the guy who can blend into walls? I, <laughs> I, think, I think. I think what happens yeah, is you have it reacts with your DNA. Yeah, and right. if you're if the combination is bad, you'll die. And if the combination is good, because you're a good person and you're the main character. Then you will survive. You better hope you're the. And if you're Jamie Foxx, you have like, you have dude, literal you have literal shockwave powers. <laughs> like that yeah, that yeah. scene where he's telling them that he has pistol shrimp powers is really funny, and then it's funnier when you find out he's not joking. He actually has pistol <laughs> shrimp <laughs> powers. <laughs> he obliterates everything that's not a main character within like a ten mile radius. It's was, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, see, the thing is, Wes, I remember. That scene. I don't remember him making a making a moral commentary, but I do remember him saying like, "You don't know what you're going to get when you take it. You could get one of the bad ones and just blow up immediately." But you, but your power is always going to be your power, basically, right? Like, because because yes. Machine Gun Kelly, he's able to overdose because he takes like three of those pills and they all give him more firepower. So right. it's not like one is fire yeah. and the other one is yeah okay so i guess i it's guess a, that... it's a thing i think that reacts with yeah like wes said it reacts with your dna and it'll be consistent throughout the movie but see, i think just... that's like less isn't that less interesting though than like... i yeah i agree but well, it, well it takes i it, didn't it, even know it was a moral thing it takes I it i mean i may i might be i may have misheard it, but there there's an episode of static shock uh, the amazing television static shock where it's a similar static thing where it. it's like if you crack um like a bubble wrap the powers mm-hmm. will shoot out and you'll get a new power each time you pop a new bubble wrap and if wow. you overdose you'll get too many powers so i'm like i originally i was like oh is that what this is but no Man, it's no. like if you by the luck of the draw you get bulletproof powers then you're amazing you just mm-hmm. you're bulletproof forever <laughs> feel bad for her. like that guy who had wolverine powers but they literally said his bones like splinter off and like come out of them, and use them. <laughs> yeah. they're sharp enough to break guns in half it's like isn't that guy in pain he's not gonna live yeah. normal life after this right no because i'm like a cool fighting and then what like he goes home to his wife and she's like your bones are splintered off your body and they're poking out of you. How are we going to have sex? How are we going to raise your kids? <laughs> Dude, I, I stub my toe and I'm out of commission for five minutes. Yeah. I don't know how this guy is what if you, the shattering bone guns with a splintered arm. off and you could run across rooftops and, and fight people with your splintered off bone. Yeah. Would you it's, be happy yeah, to have that power? Okay, but that makes sense, I guess. It's just like it's disappointing that that's the case. Correct. Um, six weeks later, after the drugs are brought to uh, to NOLA, Newt's teenage cousin, Robin, a dealer herself, uh, this is Dominic Fishback, I don't understand how they're cousins, is nearly <laughs> robbed by customers seeking power. She's rescued by NOPD officer Frank Shaver, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, yep. one of her regular buyers. Art, Jamie Foxx, a man hunting for the distributor, tracks Newt down, and Newt dies after their struggle because he overdoses on power. Cool fight scene. Yeah. Uh, very cool beautiful. fight scene. Very grotesque. What, what scene? Where, where Machine Gun Kelly bites it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I like when they're going through that random woman's apartment and she's like yeah. hitting him with the throat. She throws like, boiling water on him. No, you gotta kill somebody or something. Um, also, Machine Gun Kelly is either her blood relative or her play cousin, who's also her dealer. Right. Yes. <laughs> because she calls him cousin. Stop. Dominic Fishback as Robin. She calls Machine Gun Kelly her cousin like multiple yeah, times. Yeah, and her mom calls him her cousin too. And she is, they are a black family and he is a white man. He is the whitest man. He is the whitest he is man. He's about as white as they can. I'm not saying it's not possible. He is I'm just saying I need an explanation. I want more. <laughs> he is literally um, so white, he's like a bottle of lean brought to life. He's like. <laughs> Machine Gun Kelly, who is dating Megan Fox in real life, you know, what for a long time, 
yeah for a while now I, um, I'm, I'm not on this planet <laughs> frank <laughs> foils a bank robbery by a power enhanced thief but is suspended for using power himself this is a, this is a kind of a cool scene it's just funny that this guy is naked running yeah. around the invisible man the like chameleon dude or whatever um and then joseph He's a bad police officer, is he not? Like he goes in there and the man escapes. Like he that's yeah. how he escapes because he walked he in after him. Why did an exit? Also, the time doesn't make sense. So yeah. So their 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 powers clock out at the same time, mm. but that guy has been against the wall for at least a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. He's did he take standing. another one, baby? With how it works, he just blends into shit. It's crazy. Like, look at <laughs> how about you dump some paint on him? Like, why don't you? <laughs> well, yeah, that's I've yeah, never seen the sequel to When a Stranger Calls by any chance. <laughs> Justin, I've no, I know you've seen the original. You've probably seen this. No, I, I don't even know if I've. There's a sequel I've called When a Stranger Calls Back. Yes, and oh, it's oh, the same a lady. Yeah. Decades later, the lady from the first movie, and she's in her house, and the stranger is there. And he paints himself <laughs> to look like her bookcase. And he turns into her bookcase because he painted himself. And then she walks past and the shot lingers. And he moves and he's got like bookcase painting all over him. The he's most. chasing her around with bookcase painting. It that, reminded me of that movie. The time he chose the hardest that. thing. Yeah. Is this guy naked? Is that well, a costume? He has to be. He's naked? Yeah, he he's naked, yeah. And... and- and uh, yeah, I, well, they they good time him because he opens the money bag and then it sprays him with like the dye. Yeah, the so good time. Did the, I was the gonna say, time. I was gonna say it's good time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's so around the that's, era. that's how. Um, and Joseph Gordon Levitt. Joseph can track him. Yeah, he gets shot in the in the head, and his eye is is never the same for the rest of the no. movie. You have to just look at <laughs> it with I, like that. I was thinking the other day. That's always cool in movies when like the, yeah. when the main character just like the fucked up like bloody that's eye. permanent now. Like, yeah, that's how a do part they do of that. It. By the way, is that just a, a lens, a contact lens? Contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's probably a contact. Um, he, he, yeah, he, he, uh, he's just that he's, is a badass. He's Clint up. Eastwood the whole movie, so they yes. just were like, mess up his face. He's Clint Eastwood now. <laughs> In case it, it got this guy loves New Orleans. Um, the only Saints. item of clothing he owns is the Saint Saints. Saints jersey. Jersey. So the only thing that's in his closet. He wears it to work. He wears it casually. He wear actually has hands. multiple ones. He like it's like <laughs> it's like it's like, it's like, like, and, like <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, no, this is the scene that you were talking about, Danny, where like, first of all, he shows up on the scene and the feds have shown up to shut down like the, what the, no, the NOPD are doing. And then Courtney B. Vance yeah. was playing the police captain, uh, reprimands him for using power after he suplexes this guy on the street. And then he like tells him like, hey, like, uh, <laughs> he takes off his baseball cap and he has a, a newspaper clipping of Jamie Foxx's character. Oh, dude, why they, Why was it in his hat? No, I think <laughs> what was happening was he took away his badge, but he was like, keep the hat because oh. the hat identifies you as a cop. Don't let anyone know. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Or you, you just give me the badge back. Like, if you, want, if you don't actually want to fire me. I don't know why he kept a black and white newspaper clipping. Like, in his hat. <laughs> it's, and it's not sweaty. Like, it's in the well, well, yeah. that. Um, yeah, so he he gives him this newspaper clip and he's like, "This is that guy, uh, 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 Art, who they we suspect to be the source of the drug." So using Newt's phone to find and abduct Robin, Art forces her to take him. We also call him the Major. That's like his the Major, his, yeah. His name forces Jamie her to Fox. take him to the drug cartel's safe house. Now let's talk about. This is where I want to talk about Jamie Foxx's performance because uh, he's evil. He in, is insane he's an evil person and and yeah like they kind of redeem him by the end but this first scene is hard to watch where he's like shoving this this girl in a in a trunk and like slamming on top of her but i was also thinking there's been a debate recently on twitter Mm -hmm. uh about uh will smith or jamie fox who's the better actor why is that why is that even the debate jamie 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 fox Fox. it's jamie (laughs) fox but and i think that's i think that's you can pretty much argue that the thing is that like I was thinking like, okay, Jamie Foxx, I think, is is willing to mess with his image in a way that Will Smith is not. Mm. But at the same time, mm. Will Smith twice in a row now with Bright and Men in Black has just played a jerk, like a, like yes. a completely irredeemable human being. Not because yeah. they're like, not because they're a murderer, but just because like they're not someone you want to hang out with. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's mm. intentional. I'm not sure if that's Will Smith being like, also in um in uh, Gemini Man, God forbid. In Suicide Squad. <laughs> But Suicide Squad, not even, because he's still like charming in that. Like, yeah. I think there was a there was a switch. Is he not charming in Gemini Man? What about his CGI thirty years younger face? That was <laughs> <A> nightmare. <laughs> 
Gemini well, Man and, Men, and, 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 and Bad Boy. Did I say Men in Black? I meant you Bad Boy, by the way. You said Men in Black. Uh, uh, bad Men, Boys. I mean, he's, and, he's not great in Men in Black either, but, no, you know. He, um, no, but that's well, him still trying to be like Will Smith. Now he's, he's just like a grumpy old man in a well, lot of well, stuff. They, they but I feel like, like Jamie Foxx is... Like the 90s black guy comedic relief is what they were writing. Him yes. I, yes. I, yeah. So to answer your question, Justin, I think Jamie Foxx is an incredible actor. I think Will Smith, yes. I think Will Smith that's is good when he is cast well. I think the difference is that Jamie Foxx is pretty much good in shitty movies. Like, yeah. like Jamie Foxx can yeah. be good any in anything, mm. um, as told by like Just Mercy is an okay movie, but Jamie Foxx eats his role. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. Um, I don't know if Will Smith has the same ability. Like, yeah. I think when the movie is good and Will Smith is cast well, he's good. But like Jamie Foxx in this movie, which I think his role kind of feels like two roles hodgepodge together over mm. two drafts. Like it feels like there's a version where he's, he's the bad guy. In the back half. Yeah. yeah, it feels like there's a draft where he's a good guy, and then there's a draft where he's an antihero, mm. and then those two drafts were melded together because he fully casually kills people. Yeah, uh, he kills. It, it doesn't need to kill people. A doorman. Like he just he destroys fully, this man. doorman. He, he fully that pushes this guy into a shard of guy. ice. <laughs> Just and and it's not like I'm just gonna shoot you. It's the most creative murders. He's a kid some orgies. Yeah, stabbing <laughs> people by skulls and breaking Adam's apples. Or yeah, whatever. so he but, I, but he is good in the movie. But it was just like it was weird that uh, it was kind of weird. His arc is a little choppy, and I think Wes, that's you're kind of on something there. But yeah, uh, Art forces Robin to take him to the drug cartel safe house. He's shot while eliminating several of their of their men, and discovers that power users throughout New Orleans are being monitored as test subjects. So uh, Robin and, and Major, they bond as she treats his wounds. They go to a, a vet office uh, and she raps. This is a pretty cool scene where she's, yeah, she's free. That was, that was really good. Uh, that's it that's is. part of what they sold the movie on uh, is is just their chemistry, which I think yeah. is very legitimate. She's multi-talented, guys. Yeah. Wait until she gets that DC slash Marvel check. Yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. wait for it. Wait for it. Um, but... Uh, uh, he reveals that after leaving the military, he was recruited by Telios, which is a private defense contractor who experimented on him to create superpowers. His daughter, Tracy, born after the experiments, exhibited powers without ever taking the drug. So she was abducted by uh, by Telios. Uh, they find Biggie hosting a private demonstration of Project Power for a potential buyer near the Superdome, where large groups of Saints fans are arriving for a home game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Biggie claims that power represents the next evolution of the human species with the pill's powers derived from the abilities of animals such as the chameleon or the wolverine frog. This is also where we meet Casey Neistat um, in this movie, not contributing really much of anything no. except that uh, Robin gets to so steal weird. his kids. Um, uh, Art interrogates Biggie at gunpoint and learns about a ship called the Genesis where, uh, pro sure. where, pa where Tracy is being held. Uh, but Frank intervenes and then Biggie takes a dose of power and he turns into... Have, you know, Mr. Hyde. Have we skipped the part where Joseph Gordon Levitt saves uh, Dominique Fishback's mom by pretending to be her lover? In yeah, her house? that's not in the summary. I like that. I think I thought that was actually kind of that was kind of, uh, kind of clever. Yeah, it was. I, I, it, what, what, what a strange. It, I get what you're saying. This is a weird scene, but also like the script. Uh, the script seems to know like Joseph Gordon Levitt and Jamie Fox are in the movie like already. Because it gives them places to riff, like yeah. where they can be charming, yeah, yeah, yeah. even though it makes no sense with the rest of the movie. It's like, why is Joseph Gordon Levitt doing like a SNL skit in the middle right. of, yeah. of this, this thing? Yeah, yeah I, and then he runs out to put the phone on the back of the truck. So and they didn't back. see that. He just, okay. He's as fast as the truck. He only runs into where the movie's just making sure there. you like him. You like yeah. Joseph Gordon Levitt. Oh, here's a goofy scene. I, I love mean, 10 Things I, I Hate About You. I'm already in. <laughs> I don't understand, though, how when when he sneezes, right? And he's like, is there a cat in here? And the, the FBI guys are like, I thought you said you lived here. I don't understand how that wasn't it for them. Like, he's like, oh, what are you talking about? You don't think I live here? And I, I was just like, oh, he's shot. He's getting killed right now. They get, yeah. they get like swindled. Like they're in a, a cartoon movie. They're like, oh, I guess we're That's wrong it. about this. Like, I would have been like, you, wait, you, you, you. They are like cartoon cops. Yeah. <laughs> Tell one lie to him, like, oh, sir, well. I guess oh, that's oh, it. Also, my favorite part of it is that uh, he is like, I'm a friend of your daughter. And she, the mom isn't like, oh, you, what do you you're mean? a grown man. How are <laughs> you a friend of my daughter? Uh, 
There are so many questions that would that would arise uh, that don't get to come up. Why but, did he um, take mom's phone yeah, and hold I've, on to? Because is, isn't she life. about to die? Isn't doesn't she have um? <laughs> yes, he like, uses her phone, phone like diabetes. lymphoma or no, something. Yeah, he's like breathing stuff. It's diabetes. Right? It's diabetes. Diabetes. Yeah, diabetes. Yeah. She's diabetic, but he he well, he takes like, the phone to he, track them. She's not more upset about diabetes. him taking her phone like that. I would have been pretty pissed off. I wouldn't have let that go. Yeah, I would have been like, like "That's mine." Mom's, it's my mom's phone. And then he gives it back to her at the end. Um, well, I know, but still. yeah, yeah, no, but then she's like, "Why do you have why <laughs> why do you have this?" Uh, Major arrests. I'm sorry. Frank arrests Major and informs his captain. But Art or Major explains that the power epidemic in New Orleans is mass testing to stabilize the drug, and that Tracy, his daughter, is the source of the drug's powers. Having having convinced Frank that his captain is actually taking orders from Telios, Major purposely has himself captured by Telios and taken aboard the ship. Frank and Robin infiltrate it somehow. So, stupid. Wait, 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 wait. This is where I want to in- interject again. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's plan to get into this place is the dumbest plan I have ever... I don't even actually understand how it works, right? Because he takes he takes the pill to become, like, you know, bulletproof, right? He goes up yeah. to the guy. The guy just smokes him, right? He just shoots him in the face. And the right. next thing you know, he, like, gets up, and that man is like... Because he called him a punk. He was yeah. like, will a punk do this? He shot him in the face and said, yeah, a punk would do that. Yeah. <laughs> But but next thing you know, he's just like inside the compound. Like no one, yeah. no one checked no on one that guy that just shot that random at the f- yeah. in the face. <laughs> How did? Also, he- but also, oh, also, this Zach, this opens up a bigger question for me, and this is vital to us understanding <laughs> this movie. Is Joseph Gordon Levitt's character the same character as his character in Dark Knight Rises? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Continuity. Dark Knight Rises been written like this. Yes. Now. <laughs> uh, is. Is literally like uh joseph gordon levitt you with your one year of cop training are the new batman and you know bruce wayne is you know he gave you a look one time and, that you- <laughs> and you knew he was batman dude i i think that was one of the that's one of the just a brief diversion uh that was one of the first times i remember being in a theater and like groaning when he goes to, he goes to like retire from being a cop you know that look and the gave. lady is like Okay. You should use your first name. I like that name, Robin. Robin. And he's like, <laughs> and looks at well, the I mean, audience. Just, my mom loved that. But but the <laughs> thing, sort of my mom right. actually. When we eventually get to Dark Knight Rises, which will happen eventually, mm. we're gonna have to talk about the fact that Joseph Gordon Levitt was at his peak there. Like that was his the peak of his career. Yeah, was right before that movie, and and I'm sure they were like, Joseph, you get to play Robin, and he was like, Oh my gosh, and then yeah. he got that script. <laughs> <laughs> Vanished. As Robin, he steps onto a platform and it rises and the movie ends. <laughs> <laughs> so really, it's Robin. Right? His name is just Robin. Right? His name is literally yeah. Robin. Yeah. His name is Robin. Which, which, which I guess <laughs> Christopher Nolan thinks is better than, than Dick just, Grayson. Than Dick Grayson. Because why would he oh, use no. his real name? If, you know what? Um, moving can't. forward. <laughs> what if it was so, Robin, Dick, Grayson? <laughs> Wait, can what, I if his name, what if his name was Dick Grayson? Is Robin? That was his. <laughs> you know, I really Robin, like Timothy, name. Drake, Dick Jason, Grayson, Todd, your third. It, it's so great to see Joseph Quinn Levitt back. I don't care that it's stupid. I don't. Yeah, care. no, no yeah. True. I mean, it's, he's 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 a lot of fun. But um, uh, again, let me just really quick say that that Joseph Gordon Levitt's plan, the stupid plan, then leads <laughs> Dominique Fishback to sneak on board the ship as well. because yeah. she thinks that he's dead he didn't yeah. tell her that he wasn't Anything. dead and yeah. so she sneaks on and so he's surprised he's like hey what are you doing here and she's like i thought you died <laughs> that was his plan that's what happened <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but then okay but but zach the third act is notorious of movies it was like superhero movies are notorious for they just stop making sense they stop it's yeah, fine because yeah. you don't care that's i was true. gonna say it's the same like pitfalls that every other marvel thing falls into where suddenly mm-hmm. just there is the, the, there's the circumstances and like people have the powers to just like fix everything and shit just kind of happens it's yeah. whatever so it's whatever just much. iron man's gonna punch the mandarin in the face well it's finally he died because now his daughter is the power to bring people back okay so i wanted to so talk hang, about it. hang on because we're, 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 we're basically there we're basically there um uh art 
Art persuades a, a, a guard to free him by by giving him the the pistol shrimp monologue about how pistol shrimps can heat up the water to eight thousand degrees uh, hotter than the surface of the sun. Frank and Major kill Wallace, the big guy from Equalizer uh, with the beard and the mustache. Again. Uh, while Robin finds Tracy and reunites with her father. As the four attempt to flee, Robin is captured by Doctor Gardner, the head of Project Power, demands Tracy in exchange for Robin's life. Major confronts Gardner, revealing that he has the pistol shrimp powers, which he uses to incinerate everybody except for Robin. Except wait, 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 wait. Okay, can we pause here? Because um, I'm convinced this movie has the same third act as X-Men The Last Stand. Uh, because the idea of a person, a kid, that the government is using their superpowers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're actually absolutely right. a serum. But we don't know what the kid does. Until the third no. act, <laughs> when when someone walks into a room and it's like, oh my gosh, you have <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess because like, because basically all that happens is uh, Tracy uh, Art like dies is like a sacrificial thing. Tracy brings him back to life. They all escape the ship happily ever after. Uh, a major gives Robin money to pay for uh, the surgery, and then the movie ends in a weird way where he's like driving back down the highway, and they're like on the radio. They play a song on the radio. I don't yeah, know what that's about. But um, yeah, it's my work is my power. That's that's the song. Yeah, the weird thing about um, <laughs> the weird thing about Tracy is that it, it's unclear if if her power is just. I, well, no, I guess it's not unclear. Like because when she passes by that plant. That dead planet comes back to life. Yeah, but it's she, like she has she has powers. She's like a mutant because she can her, like she was born with it. She was yeah, born with but it, I was right. just trying to figure out like why like does she have other powers? Does she have all powers, or is it just? I, I like, just think that's how the serum reacted with her. What, DNA. what animal can do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. also, 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 the movie attempts to make it like a commentary on how black people are use because it talks about Henrietta, Henrietta Lacks, Lacks yeah, and I was like weird. I was like we have 20 minutes left please yeah. don't you don't have enough time you don't, <laughs> have no enough way time you, you don't have enough time for this and this is part of why we wanted to pair this with Chronicle because uh these are both movies that are using superpowers but are also like about trying to be about other things Correct. uh and like the amount of like Katrina shaming that this movie does is like give it a rest like George, Joseph Gordon-Levitt saying you know what happens last time we trusted men in suits to take care of New Orleans. Dude, I, I know I already said this, but like Joseph Gordon-Levitt being the guy who's like, you know, New Orleans is so beat. Like, I'm the guy who's going to save New Orleans. Like, that didn't, that wasn't weird to anyone else. It was. No, it was. It was. It was like it was. The New Orleans what, savior. What was his accent also? I, it's unidentifiable. He seems to be the only Sutter. one trying to do a, no, a NOLA accent because yeah. everyone else is kind of just like. Everyone's just like, doing their thing. Yeah, their own voice. I mean, I think I don't want to be. I think maybe Dominique Fishback is also kind of maybe doing something, but it's it's all kind of samey because yeah. uh, you, you, I think he's the only one who's like, I have to like change my voice and sound. And like it I'm was normal. crazy, yeah. Which I, I, I mean, appreciate I guess, the effort, but like, yeah, I guess Channing Tatum should take some lessons from him for this Gambit movie whenever it comes out. Here we go. In um, forty years, in 40 years. I, I'm sure. I, I'm, I could see the MCU casting him as Gambit. You're the world's silliest I, I, boys. I could, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> I could see the MCU casting him as Gambit as a gag. Yeah, I could see that. I yeah, I'm like definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. What What would y'all as a as a mini game Zach uh, brought up? What would y'all want your power to be? Like you crack a pill, what would what would you want your your power to be? Honestly, oh, Sonical so, got it right because I've always said telekinesis is. is like flying it's the, and it's looking, the best it's, power. Yeah, it, it is, is the best power, but, hands down. Are, are we are we saying are we saying what superpower we would want generally, or like Project Power rules? So like if we want fire powers, our we will self immolate. Like is oh. that? It? <laughs> well, like, how about this? Pretend you're the main character, so those side effects don't apply to you with yeah, whatever power go. that you use. There you go. There you go. I would, I would love, uh, I would just love something basic. Like telekinesis would be great. Spider yeah. sense would be cool. Spider the, sense would be great. Senses. Mm -hmm. The question is, you have to, if it's based on the, well, although, you know what, though, because Project Power breaks its own rule, right? It's like, it's all based on animals. And then you have these people with these, like, inexplicable. Except for the first two power sets we see in yeah. the movie, like. Pyrokinesis. Lady, <laughs> fucking fire boy. Well, they say, well, they, say that, they say that, that those two powers are just weather manipulation. Oh, right. Or, or, or temperature manipulation, which I guess nice you could try. say lizard, lizards manipulate. So animals and elemental. Well, they, well, I guess they would say that lizards, man, like cold blooded animals, manipulate. Yeah, their their internal environment. Right. Yes. Uh, and they 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 thermoregulate. But the thing with um, 
I guess with the bulletproof, it's also like, okay, there are animals that have tough hides, so if you scale that to what a human animals being would that need... Animals people back to life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, animals. Animal. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, the Jimmy Fox power is really cool, but it's also like... Clearly, <laughs> clearly, it's like a deus ex machina. Like, of course, Jimmy Fox yes. has the Omega level mutant power. Guess what I have? <laughs> I just so happen I have the, the DNA makeup to obliterate thing like Everything. things like a pistol for him to literally point at like Dominic <laughs> push back to someone in front of him and he like points his finger <laughs> and blows them up. All right, good thing <laughs> he's back surrounded. The only thing that could ruin this if is if is uh if he had like pistol shrimp powers or something. That was uh, <laughs> wait also oh, do, wait. do you do you die every time you use the pistol shrimp power? That's like what? I, 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 I think it burns I mean, you up. It burns you up. Wasn't he I, said, I don't want it. I don't want it. Bill at the end of the movie? No, but he was says that? every time he uses it, he almost dies because like yes, the machine. He used it once powers, before. It burns but, you up. Okay. So he had used it. I don't it want before. that power. Yeah, save his daughter. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. He used yeah. it to escape the the, the facility no, and then when he had his kid then fucking silly. And then he had and then he had sex within the five minutes because that's the only <laughs> way he could have gotten that. Or else everybody everybody who's ever ingested those pills <laughs> his wife, I guess. I don't know. He just he was, he walked into a bar right, yeah. with two minutes left on the clock Is and said, fun? someone, someone please. <laughs> hey, come on now. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I guess we're, I don't know what my power would be. I, based on the stuff that we saw, um, I do like the, I think telekinesis is like, all of us would probably appreciate that. I've also always said telepathy would be something I, I really might like. Um, but I based well, off the powers we saw. really like you were shocked, Zach. Huh? You nodded in agreement earlier when we said no. no he said telekinesis, but telepathy is is that's that's totally different. different. That's a different ball game. I don't think yeah. I'll want to read minds. I think no, me neither. Yeah, think. yeah. I, I think ultimately I that. would probably yeah I like that movie it just it would, out. especially if you can't turn it off, then you just hear everyone all the time, and then you have to learn how to deal with that. So, uh, but I, look, uh, we can rate it. Uh, I'm going to give it. I think 35 minutes of talking about power is probably it's, yeah we're good so uh, I'm gonna say uh, I'll give it two and a half power pills out of five I'll give it a I'll give it I, I liked the movie I think it's a fun movie I, I I'll never I'll probably never think about it again but I think the the performances are great uh, and it looks nice I'm gonna give it three exploding machine gun Kellys out of five. <laughs> I guess I give it like four uh, pistol shrimp Jimmy Foxes out of like eight, so it's like an even split. <laughs> nice. Uh, I will give it six. I was gonna do the pistol shrimp, so I'll give it six <laughs> Joseph Gordon Levitt's eye bl- red eyes out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Bloodshot. Bloodshot. <laughs> Um, well, that does it for our thoughts on Project Power. We're going to take another small break and then come back with Zach's personal pick for today, Josh Trank's Chronicle. Chronicle. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. Uh, we are going to talk about my pick for this week, Chronicle. Chronicle is a 2012 American found footage superhero film directed by Joss Trank with a screenplay from by Max Landis from a story by them both. Uh, it follows three Seattle high school seniors, bullied Andrew, his cousin Matt, and more popular Steve, who form a bond after gaining telekinetic powers from an unknown object. Let's... Just go right there. Uh, Danny, why don't you give yeah. us that uh, log line? All right, man. You know what the fuck it is. These kids are flying around. They're coming of age. Uh, they're filming it. And um, maybe things end up uh, being not so good. We'll have to see. We'll have to watch the movie. And uh, let's get those uh, letterbox reviews from uh, Wes. Yes, 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 yes. Letterbox. Um, okay. So it's actually very hard to find serious reviews for Chronicle because <laughs> Gates uh, letterbox and it's one of those movies that we all thought was awesome and then mm-hmm. five years later have had time to think about it and the five years later is what is now on letterbox um so den of geeks uh posted a three and a half star review that said very unique a good watch for sure i'm definitely excited to see what this trank guy does in the future <laughs> because it's apparently a guy who has Damn. a lot of talent 
I do think the camera gimmick in this movie gets repetitive near the end, and the third act gets kind of goes kind of off the rails, especially due to the lower grade F. Uh, VFX, but the movie is overall a great time. Uh Michael Jordan's character is especially great. Um, We also have a three-star review from Jeremy, uh, which is simply X-Men, the New Mutants. And the final (laughs) review we have is a three-star review from Ashley, uh, my personal favorite, which is what's the bet that Max Landis, a piece of shit in human form, wrote this film after a woman rejected him? (laughs) one time and felt so powerless that he wishes he got cool superpowers. Take it away. I, I have a question to pose for everybody. Do we think every time someone writes a screenplay about alienation, do we think every time we see a movie about that, someone is doing Taxi Driver? Or what you said, the writer is like having a Travis Bickle moment and they think they're coming up with it for the first time. Yes. Like, do, do you think they, they wrote this? Do you think Max Lane just wrote this with Taxi Driver in mind, no. or do you think he was he was in that school shooter mindset? Mm. I I think uh, school uh, alleged, not alleged. I think uh, actual rapist Max Landis is <laughs> a bad dude, and and that. probably uh, yeah, no, he, 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 he probably he created a he probably created a power fantasy because uh, he is a bad dude. You know what I mean? Mm. But we can talk about that as we go along. <laughs> but I think <laughs> yeah. it's the second. One. I think right. it's the second. Do you think he empathizes with uh, Dane Don's character? Oh, or do, almost, do you think he is trying really. to be like... Yeah, that's his POV. I mean, we'll almost, talk about yeah, this. That's at, his POV. At the end, he's clearly a monster. Yeah. He hates himself. At the end, he's clearly a monster. <laughs> I, I think, yeah, I think yeah. Max Lanz is trying to double dip and do a best of both worlds thing. Yeah. We can well, have him do this behavior and have the, the uh, natural selection, Darwinism, uh, Columbine mindset. As long as at the end, we tell the audience that that was bad. That guy's no good. Right. And we'll see. Well, let's get she- everyone's. Yeah, let's get everyone's first uh, impression. So, Dan, let's start with you. It's fine. It's crime. <laughs> it's fine, That's it. I uh, I had only seen bits and pieces of it, so it was good to watch mm-hmm. uh, the whole thing um, put together. I, I'm a sucker for early found footage. I just think it's funny how they have to like come up with ways to mm. somehow have like key events be recorded. On you camera. know, I. I think that final fight is really hilarious and creative at the same time. <laughs> just the ways that he comes up with, you know, to film him. So, I mean, he, why would he telepathically like suck all the iPhones and iPads? <laughs> worth of unless he wanted cameras. all that like HD coverage of them having that shower burst shot. You know, that's just, it's funny and I think it's cool. I don't know. Great. All right. And uh, Wes, let's move to you. When I saw Chronicle in 2012, I was a freshman in high school and i loved it i saw it twice um i thought it was really creative i love superheroes all my dude friends were like this is the most amazing movie ever uh and i wished i never rewatched it and that was my thought forever because i i i don't think this movie holds up um i think it is an incel masterpiece uh a masterpiece (laughs) of incel power fantasies um we can talk about it more i I think the best part of this movie is Michael B. Jordan, and I wish he did more roles like this sure. because this is his pocket right here. Is is playing a charming, mm-hmm. smart guy that we like. Mm-hmm. Um, Dane DeHaan is yeah. fine. No, Dane DeHaan is the one who came out the best out of this initially. Like That's he's the one who got the much most. The v Dane DeHaan. Role. This is the I mean, Dane DeHaan, but it seems I remember like they tailor that around how he looks and how. He but they speaks. but they tried to replicate this with Dane DeHaan because I remember Michael mm-hmm. B. Jordan got some roles. Too. Michael B. Jordan got some roles, but he wasn't heating up the way Dane DeHaan kind of shot out of this and into the stratosphere. And then Alex yeah. Russell went on to play like a, a villain in, in Carrie and whatever. So like, like I think in the Carrie remake? he did. Yeah. I had never seen yeah. that. Actor, um, so I, it's fine. It's a, it's a fine movie. I think there's a lot of issues. We can talk about them, but that's how I feel. About Great. It. Justin. Yes, sir. Um, this is my first time seeing Chronicle. And had I seen it around the same time that Wes and a lot of you had, I, I too think I would have been obsessed with it. Mm. Uh, Elson, I'm in the same just, boat, dude. I've only yeah. seen bits and pieces. Yeah, it, it, it just it wasn't in my uh, I didn't, you know, I knew when it came out, but like I just didn't get to see it. it wasn't the type of movies that I was seeing at that time. Uh, yeah, you know, I think that um, I didn't I, I also think that it hasn't aged the best. And not just in terms of the effects, which like obviously those are old, uh, especially at the end. But some of the um, just some of the writing choices, like dialogue wise, are just mm. weird. And also like uh, the, the thematically as well, and and the choice to just like 
make Dane DeHaan's character the most downtrodden. I mean, it really no, is I like I, 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 when we posted that we were doing this movie, um, I described it in the caption as a super horror flick because I think it is pretty. I, I, I would imagine we'd all agree that it's it's at least trying to be a horror movie. Yeah. Um, we got some, and, and then Amir was saying that he that he doesn't think that's the case. Our friend Amir Royale. Um, but I like this movie is Carrie. Like this movie. Yeah is Carrie with three boys and, and the, and the Carrie one that meets, six men meets taxi driver meets Akira. And, yeah. Meets Akira as well. Yeah. Um, and which is why, I mean, further cemented by the fact that Carrie and Akira are the, are in the C also seg- section uh, in, on the Wikipedia article. Mm-hmm. So like all these movies as not only in terms of the power set, like the telekinesis, but in terms of the, the character who is downtrodden and gets this power and because of their inability to, to cope, uh, they lash out, but um, yeah, I think there's a lot to talk not, about both seriously and funnily. Question, but mm-hmm. um, I just wanted to know wh- why do you guys think it's always telekinesis for these kinds of stories? It's easy like, effects I- wise. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it does. The most. It's a catch-all. Yeah, right. and that too. Yeah, but it's 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 easy effects wise. That's why like um, you know, like you look at this reminds me of speaking of X Men, which we'll probably reference a lot. But uh, when you look at the comics, right? Like you see Magneto and Jean Grey, and they have these like purple, pink energy orbs around their hands. Yeah, yeah. In the movies, they're just like moving their hand, and stuff right. is is getting picked mm-hmm. up. Because, and I hope that in the MCU we get a little bit more creativity with how these powers look. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's kind of boring to just see. I mean, it's cool, like from a practical standpoint. Okay, but... well, Captain Marvel was shooting lasers out of her hands. <laughs> <laughs> That didn't look the best, but then WandaVision also did some lasers and that was kind of cool yeah. for, for some of the stuff it was doing. So I think there's, there's, there's room. I'll just say as far as Max Landis, I remember, I knew who he was because, um, you know, the screen junkies YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, when they used to have movie do fights. That, do also, I? He has his own YouTube channel where he did a death of Superman video essay. Have you guys seen Which that? he, okay. This That's is my important. Favorite thing that he, ever done. Max Landis for a second was like the geek king, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a moment, yes. because he dropped Chronicle and the death and return of Superman, his drunk history version of the Superman story yeah. dropped on the same day. And he mm-hmm. did it intentionally That's because crazy. he wanted the world to know, hello, it I'm used to be Kevin man. Smith. It is now me. Now I'm I am the nerd. king of online nerds. Yeah. And it didn't go well for Max Landis. <laughs> Long term, you mean? Long term what? Max Landis's career, like the trajectory of his career. Oh, his career, his career went literally uh, into the air into a trash can. Like, because <laughs> I remember we used to love it. Like me and Justin, I know we, yeah. we we used to like him a lot. I thought he was very curious. Well, he had a, he had a really cool pitch that we talked about for Superman uh, on that movie fights uh, thing, which I used to watch all the time. Like they, mm-hmm. it was like basically they had different brackets movies. and categories. But yeah, basically, I knew who Max Landis was prior to watching this movie, um, and I definitely think that some of Wes's thinking is correct. But um, yeah, let's go through the the summary, uh, Zach. When let's we, do we're it. Ready? Let's let's tear this thing open. Let's do it. Here we are, back on that uh, Wikipedia. Let's Thank you so up. much. Shout out to Wikipedia, forever and always. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Immediately, friendless Seattle teenager and Andrew <laughs> Detmer endures frequent abuse from bullies and his alcoholic father Richard, while also coping with his loving mother Karen, who is dying of cancer. That that hits every category you need for this protagonist yeah. and his eventual demise. I mean, this is a school shooting movie, so it mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah, the domestic quarrels and yeah. it, it all kind of just fits into place. Yep. Yeah, he begins to videotape his life for reasons. His cousin Matt Garrity invites him to a party to help him mingle, but this fails as his filming causes an altercation with an attendee who throws his drink in Andrew's face. Because when you're just filming girls dancing on top of tables at uh, a rave, that's what's going to happen to you. Can can I just say, can I say, Zach? Yeah. Um, His opening line, I think, after his dad is like, open up the door, Andrew, is like, I'm filming everything Everything. now. Why? Oh, so, so I guess, Why? okay, so, so prior to what you just said, I thought that it was one of those found footage things where, like, it opens and the guy's like, I have a camera, and uh, I'm filming everything, and there's no real reason for it, but right. I did forget that part where yes. his dad comes into his room and hits him, so I guess that does make it's, sense. It's introduced like, as yeah. him wanting to log what his father is doing to him, yes. but then it just turns into him liking the camera. And yeah, well, it takes well, it to school. That, um, what if I, I want to document school. my life outside of this, and I and I don't want 
uh, the domestic abuse to right. define me. That's and that's it's probably. also it's also sort of like a, it's like a, again following the school shooter allegory. It's like a, a manifesto. You know, mm-hmm. it will turn into the sort Columbine of killers were filming happens. themselves in they the were. basement and stuff, they talking were. to each other. They absolutely and, were. Yeah, you know, talking about Darwinism ah. and, just, and Hitler. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll come mm-hmm. up again. Wow. All right. Uh, uh, popular student Steve Montgomery, that's Michael B. Jordan, finds a crying Andrew outside the party and asks him to record a large hole that they have found in the woods. A drunken Steve and Matt enter and Andrew reluctantly joins. Um, so wait, I just really quick want to point out, and I've said this before, that that creepy, mysterious thing um, that all the people want to investigate in horror movies is what kills mm-hmm. them, right? You die. If you're like, oh, I want to go into that haunted, or if you want to go into this hole where this noise is coming from in a horror movie, you die. In a superhero mm-hmm. movie, it gives you powers. So mm-hmm. me, knowing myself, I would assume in this situation, I was in a horror movie. I would not go. I would not die. <laughs> Hence, I would not get these superpowers. Uh, so <laughs> I just want to point out that that would be my trajectory really in this movie. Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't find me crawling down into a, a, a dank hole in the middle of the forest at two a.m. How dank is this hole? Hey, hey man. <laughs> also, also, just on a on a very basic like screenwriting level, I think the smartest thing in the script, which I think has a lot of issues, is that they never explain the powers. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like we don't need to know. Like, who cares? Yeah, it's it's a glowing yeah. rock. Who cares? They're like, oh, it's, what if it's the government? Like, what if it's aliens? And it's good. Yeah, just leave it. It's super, yeah. super generic, and it's it works like really well. Um, also, more evidence for this being a horror movie: the scene where they get their powers is like a, a straight up like. I mean, there's like red, you know, there's a yeah. red filter, a red gel on the light, and they're screaming and bleeding, and yeah, yeah. Later, it's later, a lot of later, fun. taken in both the 2000, I think, 17 Power Rangers movie, and also in. Trank's Fantastic Four, like the, mm-hmm. like literally both Landis and Trank right. lift, lift this origin moment and put it in the respective <laughs> big budget, like continuations, and, yeah. and they never work. It never works as well. As and now, seems. and 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 my 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 last thing on this uh, is that Wes, you talked about the how interesting it is to see superpowers that don't, uh, that aren't glamorized, right? That don't mm-hmm. fit with the human body, and I think some of the more interesting parts in that. Godforsaken Fant Forstick uh, drink <laughs> movie body horror is element. the body horror, yeah. right? When like you know, uh, 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 Miles Teller wakes up and the thing is, like, he's yeah, he's like fused into the boulder and he's screaming for help. Like that's genuinely good. Moment. That's great. Yeah, it's it's not what it's scary for kids, but like I was interested in that. You know, yeah. <laughs> or when uh, or you have Reed, you have the the best shot in the movie. I think is when Reed is crawling out of the debris. Yeah, and he looks behind him and he's stretched back. Mm. Yeah, passes you know? out. Yeah. yeah. So you know, there's stuff like that that's really that's really cool. Yeah. All right, here we are. Uh, the trio head through a small tunnel before discovering a glowing crystalline object, which causes inexplicable phenomena as they approach it. As the object begins to react violently, the camera cuts short. That's that. Ooh. That's that's their origin. Uh, weeks yeah. later, Andrew has bought a new camera, so immediately, uh, you have to suspend your disbelief because that first camera is gone, but you have that footage. And how did they get the footage? <laughs> yeah. It's gone forever. <laughs> he took, they, he they, took the they tape out before he goes. They never all the footage. What if it's the, yeah, they uh, also didn't do that. Yeah, and most most movies around... Right, most hard. most found footage movies, they have that slow crawl at the beginning yes. where it's like, yes. this is These footage... These campers disappeared in Burkittsville, yeah. Maryland, yeah. and the, their footage was found buried in the hole. Yeah, Chronicle's not interested in that. It's interested no. in the people holding the cameras, but not why we're looking at mm-hmm. it. You know? Which is good and bad, because it seems like they didn't really think it through, but, you know, there's ambiguity there yeah. with like, right. our sense. And maybe it was like a, a national calamity, and mm-hmm. there was so much outcry to see what was going on in these kids' yeah. lives that, you know, the government got involved and they got the footage. It also yep. seems yeah. like uh, it's an ex- a writing excuse to get a better camera. So like it's kind of mm-hmm. it's kind of like grainy at the beginning. Yeah, this is really then, to, to focus on the lo fi And then and time. then and then I think they say Steve buys he bought, Steve, yeah. or, Steve or his cousin buys him a new camera and it's like a movie. <laughs> it's like a movie yeah. camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie. Yeah. I mean like yeah, the dude can't even afford medicine for his dying that- mother. It's the same recording quality that the other girl's camera is. Mm-hmm. So yes, they're filming yes. at the party and it's doing a shot, reverse shot, and the camera's in 1080p. The same. Are the same. Even though yeah. they're holding different cameras. Yeah. 
it's yeah, fine. Yeah. Whatever. And it's uh, also interesting that they don't focus on like, well, cause obviously it'd be hard to do this with found footage, but that the next time you see them, they're experimenting with their powers, um, which I really mm-hmm. liked. I thought that was cool that they, as soon as it cuts, they're like, all right, we're testing this out. You know, it's just an immediate, mm-hmm. uh, you don't have that moment where it's like, oh my God, what is this? Like we have to call each other right, and find out right, what this right, is. Right, 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 You know, right, right. Um, which I appreciated. Okay, weeks later, Andrew has bought a new camera and he records himself, Matt and Steve, as they display telekinetic abilities. As the group practices with them, they realize their abilities become stronger the more they are exercised. They develop a close friendship and begin using their abilities to play and record pranks, uh, which is what every teenager would do with this, I think. Well, I, I think I think this is the part of the movie is I think this is the part of the movie that we that I remember part. liking. Yeah. Like I remember this is what they sold the movie on. Yeah. It's in all the trailers. And yeah, it was in all the trailers. And it's like it was around the time of Project X, which is a similar mm. kind of movie. Mm. And it was like, hey, it's a found footage comedy with superpowers and it I, I think for what it is this the first half of the second act actually really works in yeah that way, yeah you know on that level yeah I, I i also went into this movie thinking it was going to be like a fun recording pranks kind of movie and then i was destroyed by that ending i was not ready <laughs> <laughs> they move that lady's car to like another parking spot yeah and then they kind of giggle about it it takes her I 10 minutes <laughs> It that takes would, that her would fuck 10 up minutes. her uh, tires. That would destroy her tires. <laughs> oh, oh, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, I get it. Like, you you know you parked here and the car is not here, but, like, like turn your head. Look over there. It's right there. <laughs> you didn't move it that far. Yeah. The laugh All right. is they, they confused her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> However, one day, Matt and Steve are horrified when Andrew telekinetically pushes a rude motorist tailgating them off the road and into a nearby pond and barely manage to save the man's life. Matt realizes how easily they can cause harm now and insists that they restrict the use of their powers, particularly against living things. I want to say, uh, you know, I agree that Michael B. Jordan is really good in this, but I also think Alex Russell is. Yeah, like, he's good. I'm, he's really I'm good. kind of more, especially later when they start doing like the, you know, I mean, obviously they've they've been trying to build it up the whole movie, but like when they start doing the family stuff and like, you know, I'm trying to be accountable for you, all that. Uh, I buy him. I think all three of them are good. I just think like Dane DeHaan is funny to me. Like him, like it's just his voice. Yeah. Like, he, he delivers he's like, everything. Like, he's too like, like me. There's a there's a right. yes. getting shoved down his and throat, he, and it seems like one of those kids who would like sit in the stall in the high school and like carve swastikas into the wall. Oh yeah, you know? he just Absolutely. seems yeah. well, 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 well. The un the unsaid part of his character that I feel like th- this is part of the problem that Max Landis doesn't have the range for it is that a guy like this doesn't become like this just from being bullied. Um, and you know, I, I mean, abuse is pretty serious, but like, there's a lot of a, people have been yeah. abused by parents, unfortunately, that don't turn out like this. Yeah. So it's like mm. we often right. use that as a scapegoat, but a person like Andrew doesn't become like Andrew just from those two factors. They become it through societal conditioning. You know what I mean? Like he becomes it by being a white supremacist, yes. and but the movie doesn't have the range for it, so it just kind of goes: he's bullied, and he has mm. powers, now he's evil. You know so what I mean? People just have a really low tolerance because they think that they're born into something where they shouldn't have to deal with so much absolutely. abuse. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Because right. immediately he gets powers and immediately, like almost immediately goes to violence in a way that the other two do not. Yeah. Like he almost immediately he is like, let me, let, <laughs> let me, let me put this fork against your hand to see if it breaks. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I would right. say, right. um, that to me is like the best part of the movies seeing him get progressively worse. That's always kind of like exciting to me. Yeah. Not yeah. Like the, the main character is, you know, like scene by scene, they're just getting more trouble yeah. and his like, descent you know, into really yeah. happened to them. Uh, it, it, this is a weird reference to make, but it's also a superhero thing where something similar happens kind of ruins it at the end, but uh, Captain, uh, no, sorry. Falcon and the winter soldier, that new captain America guy, he just gets worse and worse every episode mm-hmm. or, disturbed and mm-hmm. kills a guy under the public eye that to me was like the best part of the show i was like holy shit this is like actually engaging yeah. you know then yeah. they ruin his they ruined it. Arc they ruined it. Just like, whatever he, it, it's similar to the thing he's with like a, he's a jabroni. this guy has the ability to do good and he's just getting progressively worse yeah and that's powerful yeah i think i think this is also around the time zach or anyone correct me if you remember where like 
there's a lot of insert scenes that we may not hit on specifically. Yeah. Uh, for example, we missed a part where like a cheerleader yells at him for filming uh, them while they're yeah. dancing, which is that understandable. Was... But uh, uh, <laughs> there's a scene where he's out to eat with his mother and she, and she feeds him the line that will become thematically relevant later on in it the most unnatural way. She says like, you're stronger than all of this. I <laughs> want you to repeat that for me. Like, I thought she was, I thought she wanted him to say it to her. I thought she, she wanted to <laughs> tell me I'm stronger than son. that. I thought she oh. wanted those comforting words from her son, and then he said it about himself. I'm He's just like, imagining yeah, her, I am stronger I'm than all this. I'm imagining her behind the camera, like, like, okay, that's not what I meant, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about you, I guess. Yeah, so I just wanted to point that out because yeah. I, I hate lines like that where it's like, Very and I get it, like, it's fine. You can you can set up lines that, that then become like, to have a dual meaning by the end mm. or whatever, but no one speaks yeah, like it, that. You hear it again later on. He he like repeats it, but yeah, it's, exactly. It's really and, quickly, it's almost like the you could tell when Max Landis wrote the script, he was like, yeah, and then he says it again, and that's the part where you really uh, get that really ready for it. this the movie one. Kind of like says it and they move on. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, but and, yeah, uh, go uh, go ahead, Zach. Yeah, no, and it's also important to note that he is kind of immediately stronger than them uh and yes. it yeah. implied probably because he practices more it's more important to him yeah. he doesn't have anything else um he doesn't have a girlfriend he has nothing you know? <laughs> yeah. he's not, jordan he's is not. using it for sex like yeah, yeah. yeah. No, literally. alex russell just kind of straight up himself. sucks at it uh yeah he is the, the worst jordan's perspective i want to see what he's doing to pussy with the telekinesis good god <laughs> the dvd special feature is he tightening good it good lord he's, he, he talks about it he talks about what he does it's in the movie actually, it is in the movie i'm pretty sure he does yeah yeah in the movie. all right awesome. here we are after we are. after discovering they can fly the friends agree to fly around the world together following graduation with andrew in particular dis- uh, desiring to visit tibet because of its peaceful nature Steve encourages Andrew to enter the school talent show, uh, and this is this is proves to be a fatal mistake, where the latter <laughs> amazes his fellow students by disguising his powers as a magic act. The three celebrate. I'm sorry, but there's like, I'm there's definitely stuff that he does that like cannot be excused by yeah. street. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. everything. This shit up and is it more magic? Yeah, the you mean where he <laughs> opens his hand and the cards fly into his open hand? Yeah, like. Magnets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the three Sorry, celebrate. The three celebrate at a house party where Andrew relishes his newfound popularity, but he eventually gets drunk and accidentally vomits on a classmate, humiliating them both when they go upstairs to have sex. And to make matters worse, Michael B. Jordan <laughs> tries to like spy on them with the camera, so he yeah. walks in yeah. on this whole <laughs> <laughs> moment. He was. <laughs> I know you're trying to like rattle him because they have that kind of friendship. But, yeah, like, he just threw up. On well, what did he think he was gonna catch? Like, <laughs> just sex. <laughs> if they were in the middle of having sex, then he was gonna catch them on camera. Was he, just, like, right <laughs> <up side? laughs> was he was he always gonna go in, or was it until the pink haired girl? No, he, he did. He was like, gonna go in because he goes he goes yeah. to the camera. He's like he's like guys, history's happening right up yeah, there. Yeah. And it's like what? my room is occupied, if you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was, and it's, uh, it, I, but I'm also like, <laughs> this is this is kind of a nitpick, but like, okay, you vomited. You have telekinesis. Just like, pick it up. Suck right? it back into I, your. Suck it. I, I, <laughs> I, I'd also use like, your telekinesis to kill her brain cells, so she forgets what just happened. By <laughs> also, I, mean, I know it's gross part, and it ruins part. the moment. Like, Booksmart does this move like ten years later and is just better. It's oh, like Books, I wanted to see that. That's the that's yeah. didn't uh, Rachel McAdams direct that? No, 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 no. it was Olivia uh, Wilde, Wilde, right? Yeah, Olivia but, Wilde. Uh, thank you, but thank Booksmart you. does this move of of someone's about to lose their virginity and then vomit. they vomit. Yeah, but yeah. it's like in Booksmart, Damn, everybody <laughs> in Booksmart, it actually feels intimate and sweet in a way mm. that this feels like. And mm. we're going to talk more about it. Like this is an incel movie. Like the way it's framed is like. This is just another notch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is, this is it for him. It, oh, oh, you know, but can't handle a little bit of vomit, princess. You know. But, <laughs> but in but in book smart, it's like, hey, it happens. I just don't want to have sex anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it happens. Please yeah. leave. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 
I don't think you're a disgusting human being. Like, I don't think. Yeah, yeah he's destroyed for that. Like, at school, everybody's talking about it. And it's like, really? Yeah, but like, would, would I mean, I, I don't think I was so. bullied in high school, but I feel like if that happened, maybe they would talk about you, but most people would be like, it is what it is. Yeah, I feel like most I don't people think be it like, would be a subject of national ridicule. Like, <laughs> that, that's more of like a middle school thing. I mean, I, again, yeah, like. Yeah. Well, Danny, you went to a, a suburban uh, high school. I did, was, and I threw up on every like, pink haired girl I came across. It was the same. So were they fun. gossipy like this in the same way? Because um, in my high school, I think, I think people know. are kind of gossipy wherever you go. Um, I, I definitely high school that you see in movies is always going to be different because like people aren't like getting dunked in toilet pools, for example. <laughs> Uh, and, and there's not really like clicks like you see in movies, you know. There, there's not yeah. like movies of, yeah. like the stoners and the jocks and the theater kids, and like obviously there's kids like that, but it, it's not like as clicky as you would see in the movies. So, uh, I mean, if you're asking yeah. if, if this Agreed. is like a realistic high school portrayal, I mean, I, it's as realistic as any portrayal is, and none of them really are. Yeah. So. And then he, uh, and then he fully. Uh, lassos a guy's tooth and pulls it out of his mouth. That was cool. I love that part. Uh, I think that co- that comes next. That's, yeah, yeah. Um, here we go. Like how he did it. That part was sick. All right. Here that's, we go. That's, that's, that's like um, you know how they say that like serial killers they always start with like killing animals and things like that, and they take pictures and shit. That's kind of what Small that stuff. reminds me of. It's like my first catch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guys yeah. That. It was mm-hmm. very disturbing. All right. Here we go. Uh, As his mother's condition rapidly becomes worse, Andrew becomes increasingly withdrawn and aggressive. When his father continues to abuse him in an argument and eventually strikes him, Andrew violently repels him and flees the house. That was a cool moment. Steve and Matt suffer nosebleeds due to their psychic connection, and the former flies to find Andrew sobbing in the middle of a storm. Steve attempts to console him, but the latter grows increasingly frustrated before Steve is suddenly struck by lightning and killed. At Steve's funeral, Matt confronts Andrew about what happened. Andrew denies responsibility. By the way, he brought his camera to the fucking funeral. What a decision. To the funeral. To the funeral. funeral. Andrew denies responsibility. What what a choice. (laughs) <laughs> what a choice. He denies responsibility, but later privately begs for forgiveness at Steve's grave. So I wanted to ask you super quick, is it like general consensus, Andrew, like, do you believe Andrew killed Steve? Did he Steve? kill Steve prior to ripping that kid's teeth out? <laughs> Sorry? No. no, he did not. He ripped the teeth out after he killed Steve. Yeah. Okay. I think so, yeah. That seems do, pretty good. Well, Zach, you're asking whether or not we think we think he actually caused the death? Yes. Of Steve, yeah, of course he did. Yeah, he, I bent, guess he, he did, right? tells you that he did. He bent the lightning, right? Yeah, that's what I. That's what I also assume. I just there are some people that are like, oh no, he you know, like not he, intentionally, but his emotions caused it to happen, right? Like he, yeah, well, unintentionally intentional. Yeah, like he, he, he right. deep down he knew what he was doing. Do you is this an example of Dead Brother Walking, which is the trope of killing off the black guy in the second act? Or do you think it was that written? That is what happens. Do you I think mean, it, it was? <laughs> <laughs> but do you think it was it was conceived that way in the script, yeah. or do you think it was? I don't think anything's thing? conceived as like a trope. It just becomes a trope after a while. I or feel someone, like Steve was yeah. always going to die. Yeah, yeah. I well, think here's the thing: Steve is Steve is the one who's like, he's kind of like the one he, that's, that's the elevating both of them. Yes, he right. keeps it and together. So, yeah, when he dies, it makes them both reflect more on themselves mm-hmm. because and like, also he, he dies kind of pulled them out of obscurity. A family conflict, which is just more personal. Yeah, I think that's a matter of like how the character was. I don't. I, this character doesn't seem like he was written to be black necessarily. I think mm-hmm. they just wrote a character and then they cast Michael B. Jordan because he's charming. They needed the popular. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I will, but I would say like also Steve is the only character that would have been a superhero. Uh, out of the three of them, like he's yeah, traditionally sure. like mm-hmm. Superman, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, well, and he's running off, for 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 class president yeah, and wants yeah. to be a politician. He, he, he is the he's one. He is the one that if the third act was reversed and Alex Russell's character had died, Steve would have. Oh, Steve, that's a better movie. It, it, wow. a, it's a better movie. <laughs> that but, would also, a better movie. but also, Steve becomes a superhero, and I think yeah. it, it, it becomes a different kind of movie because if you want it to be gray, then you well, keep Alex like Superman Russell. versus like the anti the or Brainiac. The, the <laughs> thing is, my thing is though is like I, as much as I hated it, 
Steve's death, I feel like is more, would be more effective than Alex Russell's death because Michael B. Jordan is just like such a force in that movie. He's so charismatic that mm-hmm. his absence, mm-hmm. like I really felt it. Like it sucks the soul out of the movie. Like it that. does. I see both sides. I, I think that like Chanel, like Frank Ocean said, um, no, but I, I see both sides. I think that it would have to have been written in a way where Alex Russell's character and Dane DeHaan's character are a lot closer mm. as opposed to it being a story about them being estranged and, and Alex Russell feeling bad about it and trying to connect with him. Yeah. If they're already close, then his death drives uh, Dane DeHaan over the edge in a way that justifies Steve having to step in. So it's just a reversal of like the connections. Correct. In the movie. Yeah. Cause I him just, and Michael B. Jordan are pretty either. tight. Right. I think that works either way. I, I think from like cohesive storytelling standpoint, I kind of like that they're estranged and yeah. from the beginning, we kind of see where it would be going. It's going to be a movie about the two of them finally going head to head. And if they didn't have powers, mm-hmm. maybe they would be going head to head and in a more, you know, contained yeah. uh, mono a mono way. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Zach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bring us home, Zach. Let's do this. Due to the incident at the party, as well as Steve's death, Andrew loses his friendship with Matt and is once again ostracized at school. Back to square one. At one point, when a bully mocks him, he rips three teeth out of the bully's mouth in front of the other students. Uh, Boldly, Andrew begins to identify himself as an apex predator. And uh, (laughs) this is where we get into... (laughs) Bold yeah, uh, yeah. A- oh, yeah. When he starts calling himself an apex predator, I'm like, okay, we really now I know. We're we're what, what, what a weird, what a weird, like. This is why I'm like, you don't have the range for this conversation because he goes from being a bullied kid to being a Nazi. Like he's like mm-hmm. he literally like this red mind comp in between yeah. scenes. <laughs> this is where the movie has a direct uh, parallel to Columbine. Yeah, I, I think Max mm-hmm. Lance must have read up on it because they were obsessed with social Darwinism and uh, he did, natural selection. Max Landis stuff. doesn't read anything but comic books, but he, well, I'm yeah. sure he knew about <laughs> Columbine shit. Everybody, yeah, knows. yeah, yeah. But, but, kind of wrote it but what's what's weird about the Columbine stuff is that it, there's been so many things. Like the predominant rumor around Columbine as a way to protect those boys when they died was saying that they were bullied, and that mm. was what it was. And, and media for, media yeah. warped their fragile mm-hmm. little and, and for years that was the rumor until like the Dave Cullen book came out and was essentially like they were white supremacists yeah. and like they had mental they had uh, they were mentally and, and pe- people didn't like them yeah. but it's not that that was the whole they were very the popular school. one of them was very popular one of them was very popular yeah yeah Dylan was like a lackey yeah yeah, yeah. he was like a dumb mm-hmm. lackey oh, but good. mental illness and white supremacy were, were the primary factors in that mm-hmm. and probably. In this, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> so yeah, he calls himself an apex predator. Yeah, calls himself an apex predator, <laughs> rationalizing that he should not feel guilt for using his powers to hurt those weaker than him. Great, having no money to pay for his mother's medication, Andrew disguises himself. <laughs> His, again, an, another genius plan. Andrew disguises himself <laughs> using Richard's firefighter <laughs> gear and uses his powers to steal money. While like robbing that. a gas station, he worst possible scenario scenario he inadvertently causes an explosion that puts him in the hospital. Um, he puts this gear on, and it's it's just heavy, and it's like you could have just gotten like a, a ski mask and had mobility yeah. still, right? Um, but he he puts on his. But it's scarier this way. Well, he's isn't he trying to frame? Isn't he trying oh, to is frame? He? Is his, he? Because uh, I feel like that would backfire. Stepdad. Isn't that happening? Because his stepdad was, a <laughs> yeah, he was. His stepdad was a firefighter. Are they gonna go? <laughs> <laughs> That's Mitch's firefighter outfit outside. <laughs> yeah, so, I like that. I think that would think that that would frame him. I don't think that was a lot because it's like yeah. it's kind of a cool mm. character study moment because while he's doing this stuff, you're thinking in his mind, does right. he think of himself as a villain or yeah. does he think? I'm only doing this yeah. out of necessity, and as soon as I have the, the money, I will way. stop. The second but will we'll, we'll you, I mean, but we're you thinking while we're watching it. I, what I'll say, Danny, is I think it. on the meta to level, me, it looks cool to have him in a firefighter outfit. I think it does. It is pretty, a pretty effective moment. Yeah. And I think even on the personal level, he thinks it looks cool. I mean, he's clearly starting to develop narcissistic yes. uh, tendencies throughout the movie. We forgot to mention at a point the way that the, the, way the film justifies angles that no human could achieve is because the, the camera's moving telekinetically. Yes. He's so there's cool. a scene where he's moving it across his own face. Mm. And like, I think he is starting to, that's part of why at the end when he pulls those cameras towards him, mm. 
he's he wants people to see him. He wants to be seen yeah, the, right. the way that and have control over his image. Yeah. So, you know. And um, uh, there's there's this part that it was kind of skipped over where Matt tries to confront him in his room. He flies into his room um, and he tries to punch Andrew in the face. And it is just the most awkward thing possible because Dane DeHaan just stops his fist in midair. Yeah. And Matt still is trying to punch him through this telekinesis. <laughs> so to do this. so yeah. they're just standing there like this. And eventually he gives up and he I just know. flies away. <laughs> Matt could use your second hand. Right. I can't fault. I can't fault Max Landis for that because if I was writing a screenplay where two people both had telekinesis, I would definitely write a part where one tries to stop, punch the other, and the other. Oh, stops for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that's that's it's cool. great. It's, it's that's great. I mean, we we have we've kind of left Josh Trank out to dry a little bit, like we haven't <laughs> talked about. But that's part of his like the issue with the directing here is that once it hits the third act, it's trying to still be grounded, but like Alex Russell's flying through a window. Like he like, there's a bit, there's a I cut where say, he jumps through the window. Yeah, him jumping out. He, he's <laughs> Superman, Superman. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. on the trampoline and he jumps out the window from the trampoline. Uh, at his bedside, a saddened Richard informs an unconscious Andrew that Karen has died. He goes on to say that she died while he was looking out, while he was out looking for Andrew. And it is Andrew's fault. God, as his father is about to strike his unconscious son his yeah. unconscious burnt son he wants to hit him andrew abruptly grabs his arm and blows out the wall of the room in, in what is maybe Great moment. a, a horror a true horror movie moment the way his eyes just yeah. snap open and he just grabs the hand um it's probably it gives me chills thinking about it. it's probably my the best or at least my favorite part of the movie yes my favorite moment where it's just like and also, this is another moment where the justification for the camera is weird because, like, the police are like, oh, we have to record everything for the – so no, we're just don't. going to put a camera in his hospital room. No, you don't. Because that's the one that's going to have audio. Just make the surveillance camera the one with the audio. Yeah. You don't need to if have two. If he was passed out, then who took his personal camera and set it up in the hospital room? <laughs> I, exactly. Yeah, I, right. Why are they using his personal camera and not a police camera? Well, I think it is a police camera. Is, I think this is why they've said goodbye. Camera? I think it is. <laughs> it's a compilation personal. of a bunch of different sources of yeah. footage. His because his camera exploded with him, right? Specifically, uh, yes. we see security footage, and in the security footage, we see a camera on a tripod inching closer. Yes, and I think yes. that Incredible. his camera set it up for him. Oh, okay. weird! I don't. <laughs> when would you be sitting in the hospital room, and not only do they have security camera like in the corner, but they have like a big bulky camera on a tripod in front of the yeah. gurney you know well, also let me, let me offer like, this dan because when he goes into the gas station he has his camera with him and it explodes and then that explosion it, happens and then the surveillance the thing where he's flying it around right and the but the explosion happens and we see him unconscious from the surveillance footage yeah yeah, yeah. so i'm wondering yeah. if his if that if his personal camera <laughs> the second exploded. camera he's lost exploded and, then, and then they, they but they somehow were able to Take the footage. Off. We're we're nitpicking. We're, but it doesn't make it's not gonna, it's not gonna <laughs> happen. We're not gonna explain this, guys. <laughs> you know what? That's not true. Yeah, All right. Other found movies are a bit more clear, but this one there are yeah. yeah. But this one, like yeah, it's it's um. So yeah, he blows the the wall. Yes, and then uh, while at a birthday, birthday party, party yeah. Matt experiences a severe nosebleed and senses Andrew is in trouble. He and his mm. girlfriend Casey. She's a character. Don't worry about it. Go to the hospital. And may I say, the only reason that Casey is in this finale is so, so that Matt can be filmed be. while he's going because he could fly to this hospital. To, to make us care about, to make us care about the guy. You know, he has a girlfriend. You gotta care about. The I and think so it's because. You, uh, no, Dad, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, it's like he could fly there, get there faster. He wouldn't have to worry about these roadblocks, but yeah. they need to see him being like, Andrew's in trouble. I have to save Andrew. And I think yeah. that's why she's there. And also, it's also, he needs to have uh, the Universal Studios ride moment where the can't, where the the uh, the car is getting pulled around the needle and you feel like you're yes. like in Disney World. You know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It gives it there. There, there is a cool. Okay, here we are. Come on, stay on topic, Zach. Um, <laughs> he and his girlfriend Casey go to the hospital, where Andrew flies out of the hospital room, dangling his father before dropping him. Matt flies up and saves Richard before confronting. Just let just, let, just be like, who's that? I don't care. 
before it's abusive. Just let him drop. <laughs> That's the whole reason Andrew's mad at him in that finale. Before but the, the, the abuser, like blaming his stepson for something that was out of his control and like trying to hit him while he's vulnerable and stuff, that was all very believable because mm-hmm. there are people who were that like yeah. low and absolutely that small of a perception of themselves. So yeah, I believe that. That felt yeah. That's that probably f- this movie's strongest relationship is him and his abusive dad. That that all was really like real to yeah. me when he yeah. up to him and slams him against the wall and stuff. I was like, oh my god, really fresh. Yeah. And it's, you know, and it's clear that his dad really does start to get in his head because he says, these friends aren't real. They're not your friends. And eventually he well, does believe that. On the same mm-hmm. roof as an abuser. The things they're saying are insane. And you know that, but like propaganda, after a while, you're hearing it so much that your brain starts to subconsciously it's right. give catch. merit to it. It's a good catch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good catch. Um, uh, yes. Matt flies up and saves Richard before confronting his cousin, to reason with him. Um, Andrew rips him out of the car, uh, which, which was a, a cool moment for, for me. I thought that was, that was, that was great from the perspective of Casey sitting in the car matches ripped out of it. Um, and then he saves her. However, Andrew is too far gone in his rage and attacks Matt. So this is man of steel before man of steel did it. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I, was yeah. right. I was about to say that. Right. I was about to say that. But Absolutely. it's, and it's justified, right? Because when I first saw it, I was like, how the hell did they just survive? Like, how does he get hit with a bus and live? But yeah, this, this they just, justify, they justify, no right? Like the telekinetic shell that they Force can put. Field, yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so which, you know, they justify that. Uh, but also, also Zach, what's interesting about that is they, they start to use Superman shots for Alex Russell. Yeah. Like, the moment where he jumps and he flies and grabs him. Yeah. Like I remember in the theater being like, not having seen a Superman movie since returns and being like, mm-hmm. Oh, they're, they're, these are Superman shots and yeah. they're used to signify to the audience. I'm sure intentionally that Alex Russell is now the hero of the movie. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a, and it's cool because again, they've set this up where Matt is the weakest of the trio. Uh, so mm-hmm. then to have him go up against his cousin, who is the strongest by far is, Mm-hmm. W- was a great setup. Um, their fight takes them across the city, crashing through buildings and hurling vehicles. Eventually, the duo exhaust themselves and wind up in a plaza where police surround them. Uh, Andrew, uh, by accident, backs up into a street lamp and it just incapacitates him for like five minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's that. He's just out. He backs up into the street lamp, kind of like gently and then he falls to the ground for for like a good three <laughs> minutes um and yes okay no let's just keep going we'll cut that andrew's rage reaches a breaking point and he begins to destroy everything around him uh this was great alex russell mm-hmm. acting in my opinion just his desperation mm-hmm. pleading with andrew and realizing that he can't reach him is was great to me um mm-hmm. reason reason wow Realizing that Andrew can't be stomped or reasoned with and that he's putting hundreds of innocent lives in danger, Matt reluctantly impales Andrew using a spear of the statue, killing him instantly. What a way to go out. Despite his injuries, Matt is able... It seems like it should be symbolic. And what was it? Symbolic to what? (laughs) It was uh, convenient. uh, Yeah, this this actually feels also like a good time for me to mention... uh, that I, I don't know if this was the movie like subverting expectations or whatnot, but there is a point early on where they're talking about how the power is like a muscle and you have to work it out to get stronger. And if you do too much, it's going to pop. Mm. And so I, I thought I'm watching this finale and I'm looking at Dane DeHaan, you know, screaming yeah, like yeah. he's at a metal concert. I thought he was just going to have an aneurysm. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but it, it didn't happen that way. Like uh, 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 Matt had to uh, had to kill him. Yeah. Uh, which is like. That's all right. But then it, it does make you think like, oh, if they had landed anywhere else but right in front of this statue of Leonidas or whatever, mm. then like how would he have killed him? Yeah. Um, so it, There's also like, you know, the thing is, is I think in a deleted scene, but also it's kind of implied when the police shoot at him, he stops the bullets in the air. So it's, yeah. you yeah. know, it's kind of like, why didn't he have his telekinetic shield up the whole time? You know what I mean? As It was only in front of him. It wasn't oh, only in front. If he gets shot in the back, he's dead. Yeah. Um. So that was, you know, that that kind of took me out of it. But still, pretty sick moment. <clears throat> Despite his injuries, Matt is able to fly away before the police can reach him. Sometime later, Matt lands in Tibet with Andrew's camera. Uh, Tearful. Uh, where, where did he get it? 
who knows, tearfully vowing to use his powers <laughs> for good and find out what happened to them. He points the camera at a Tibetan monastery in the distance before flying away, leaving it behind the end. Cool ending. How's he going to find out what happened to him when he's lounging with monks in fucking Tibet? Zach, are you aware that there were uh, there was a sequel script to this movie written and it was completely unrelated to this story? Was yeah. It was it just more people with powers? Or? Yeah. Apparently, yes. It was more That's kind of cool. I yeah, I, yeah. I remember they find the same spooky alien thing. <laughs> Another one. It's yeah, no, on. It's on. It's also Max Landis. Who cares? Oh, he wrote it. Yeah, it's a full thing. And Josh no, Trank was the, was the one I think I read about who was like, uh, "I'm not doing it, and if I'm not doing it, it's gonna be shit." And that mm-hmm. was what I heard about. <laughs> that was, that good was, guy. I think that's these what are, he these said. Are some good guys that, that, that were involved. <laughs> <with this movie. laughs> Yeah, um, I think the only the, this is well, maybe not the only, but the only one that stands out to me in terms of moments where I because going into found footage movies, I try to like shut off that part of my brain that's like, why would you be holding a camera in this moment? Because that's yeah. how the movie wants to be. So just forget about just it. Just do but, it. Like, but also, man, like when people get like killed in the real world, there's always someone filming. Or, yeah, like, someone, but but I'm not uh, a bike or fucking hit by a car. Like, there's always a guy. Being exactly. Killed. But with so, with with the with the finale with the girlfriend in the car being launched around at like miles per hour in midair, you're not holding on to that camera. You're perfectly. dropping it and trying to hold on to the the vehicle, if anything, to stabilize yourself. So that yeah. was a little bit funky for me. Um, but yeah, it, it was an interesting final fight. Uh, like you said, it's pretty much Man of Steel. It's it's what you expect with, with two telekinetic folks. Uh, and yeah, there is that point Danny mentioned earlier where Dane DeHaan is in front of the needle and he pulls everyone's cell phones out and it circles him yeah. so that he can continue to film himself and uh, his cousin as they're fighting. And then there's also like police uh, uh, car footage. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it just reaches a point of saturation with like the amount of, of camera angles. I mean, I, and I, I get why, like it's a new, uh, medium at the time. So like you want to show out how many different ways you can do it. Mm. Um, but I think like a little less would have been more with that in yes. the finale, uh, personally. For sure. Um, but yeah, uh, are we rating it now or does anyone have, oh, Zach, thoughts? do you have, do you have any, Zach, you had a, yeah. You have any things for us to think about? Oh, well, well, you know, for me, I just, what interested me watching this was, uh, the amount of self tape acting that had to kind of happen for these actors, uh, mm. you know, just there, there are a lot of scenes where the person talking the most is actually like the person off screen, which mm-hmm. yeah. forces you to just have to watch this actor, like listening and looking at this person, yeah. you know, and yeah. that, and that you don't see that a lot. And it's, it's a choice when yeah. you, you know, you do see it. Um, and as an actor, I just thought that was interesting. Cause I'm, I'm very paranoid uh, on camera, just looking like I'm listening. I'm like, do you, do you, do you think I'm listening now? You know, it's just like, <laughs> it's hard to do that. So I, I noticed, um, you know, all three of them have those moments and it was just kind of interesting to see their strengths and their weaknesses as actors. Cause some of them I think did it better than others. Um, mm. I think, yeah. I think Dane DeHaan does it well, you know, but also it's just like his eyes are so freaking piercing that sometimes you're yeah. just like, he's just, you're just like caught up in that. It's Pete Davidson eyes. Just, <laughs> yeah. Well, D- D- Dane DeHaan was 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 Tumblr Man of the Year like three years in a row oh, after this movie oh, came out. That? Like you you couldn't go anywhere without seeing Dane DeHaan. On, Aren't on the it. Supernatural guys always the Tumblr? Guys? The, well, those those two. Yeah, but they're like they're like the progenitors. Like, yeah, like they set the standard, and then everybody else had to kind of live up to that. I mean, Dane DeHaan is like the John the Baptist of the 2010 <laughs> rush of white sad boys like <laughs> he is the forerunner to chalamet and lucas yeah. hedges I, those and... guys are all clean though dane tahan is yeah like, but disgusting. that's why he's john the baptist <laughs> he, was living in the wilderness. he was living in the wilderness for a while yeah. man but like no i i, I, I feel think like dane... chalamet is very pampered you know? da- and, but luke he's mm. Dahan is very similar to lucas hedges i mean lucas hedges is a, like a very yeah. good actor but like in terms of like the mm. white boy Kind of yeah, looks, Hedges gets roles where he's yeah. like a young guy who's like fucked up and stuff. I mean, I, I I don't know. I think I think it's weird that Dahan was the one out of the three of them that immediately shot into space and then fell out of the sky. But like, it was the <laughs> one that immediately got a bunch of roles. I think and the three of them are great. I do too, but I think Michael B. Jordan went to this movie to like Fruitvale, and then there was a little bit of a gap, yeah. and then he started to pick up heat. And Alex Russell kind of has Didn't always kind of anything. just been a supporting role. 
But Dane DeHaan is the one that immediately mm. got like leading roles immediately. You know what I mean? Which is mm. of choice. A choice, certainly. Yeah. Some, I think, Danny, it was you who mentioned uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2, where he's, yeah. he's playing yeah, yeah. Harry Osborn. Really similar character. And, yeah. yeah, really. <laughs> that I, that um, I would have used to have like a skating criticism of that movie back in the day, but I hadn't seen Chronicle. So mm, yeah. now, I can, um, now I can be even harder on Amazing Spider-Man. Exactly. <laughs> Which, God, I mean, that movie is just... It's a wreck. That's a lot. Um, I'll I'll and I'll rate it first. Go I'll go first. Uh, I don't know if I'll be alone on this. I'm gonna say bury it. Oh yeah. Uh, I think that um, this movie, uh, uh, you know, like I I enjoyed moments of it, but I think like there's st- there a lot of what it's doing has been done better. And when you look at some of the like like Wes has said, some of the um, the shallowness of the characters, specifically of Andrew. Uh, there's just not a lot of richness there and it's so like the character is very like he's a very um stereotypical portrait of of the downtrodden or bullied character which is which is fine but i just think it's like i don't know i I don't necessarily see myself going back to watch this so Mm -hmm. it's a bury it for me go ahead is it me um yeah i mean i i do uh think the concept is good enough to revisit you mm-hmm. know like columbine killer meets superhero origin story mm-hmm. i think in concept that's good enough um i also I, I think the domestic abuse stuff is understated by a lot of people i think it's actually really well done i think it's very mm-hmm. creative it's got you know great moments uh it's it's not the greatest movie ever made but i do like it enough um I think I would probably. What is it where you cook the body? Uh, Embalmment. And but I would embalm. No. Uh, yeah, yeah embalmment. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because that oh, sounds like a mid road. It is the worst one. Yeah. But... I wouldn't cream it. I would, I would embalm it. Okay. Um. Gotcha. Great, Wes. Yeah, I'm gonna bury it. Uh, I'm gonna bury it. <laughs> uh, listen, this movie isn't very good. Uh, I don't think it has some good performances. Uh, I don't think it's very good. I think it's 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 politics are weird. Uh, the fact that it gave Josh Trank and Max Landis a career is very troubling to me. Uh, <laughs> Unforgivable. Uh, Max, Landis, <laughs> Max Landis has the record for the most sold scripts, I think, in Hollywood. And that is alone. Wow. Like we should just throw Chronicle in the garbage can for allowing that to happen. Yeah. Um, the best version of Chronicle, the best version of Chronicle is the 2017 Power Rangers movie. I thought you were going to say Brightburn. N- no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Chronicle, the best thing to come out of Chronicle is the Power Rangers movie from 2017, which is a solid movie and okay. does what this is, what, it, what this movie does, but it's with actual characters. Uh, you know, I am. Do you think you'll like it? <laughs> I, I, if I don't, I actually might cry on the air. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, Chron- Chronicle is just Chronicle is just uh, needs to be relegated to the sands of time. I just I'm not feeling. <laughs> <it anymore. laughs> okay, okay. And Zach, I w- I'm kind of my opinion of this movie has changed a lot. Uh, mm. I think I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I would because when mm. I chose it, I was kind of looking at it as like I don't I don't know how I feel about this movie. Um, I think I'm gonna. Had you seen it, Zach, or no? Sorry. Had you seen it? Had you seen I did. Chronicle? Yes, I had seen it. Okay. Yeah, um, I think I'm going to give it a positive rating in the end because I do think. It, yeah, I think it does some cool things. It attempts some cool things. And while some of its themes might be kind of or, you know, could be interpreted as kind of shallow, mm-hmm. I think it's effective uh, in the execution and ultimately tells a pretty tight, cohesive story that ultimately mm. I buy the escalation of it. Um, and, and this is the mm. best I've ever yeah. constructed sentences on air. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so is that, so is that, um, so I'm going to say, then? I'm going to say, I'm going to be bold right now. I'm going to say reanimate it. Listen, oh. really? now, 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 now listen. <laughs> no, Zach, I'm, I'm with you. Thank you, Danny. Yes. Now, I, I get it, and I also didn't really know about this, uh, the Max Landis and Josh Trank politics, so that I feel weird about that now. But I didn't know about that, and I'm gonna choose to continue to keep that separate from my opinion of this movie. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna Stick say to reanimate it. Yeah, that's it. All right, that's fair. Forced to separate the art from the artist with Chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew it would come to this? 
Uh, well, uh, Wes, do you do? You, well, first of all, let me just uh, let the, the listeners know what our programming is for the rest of this week. We hope to get this out to you by Wednesday. And then on Wednesday, we'll be recording our special episode for the Oscars. Uh, Zach might be out for that episode because he has an audition. We love you, man. Best of luck. Hey, you so much. Um, thank you. Hey, and hey, then hey. next week, we'll resume regular programming. So, Wes, do you have your pick for us? I do. I do. So we haven't picked our popular pick yet. But based on what we think it will be, and a movie that I think Mortal is Kombat. is incredible is uh, imagine if it was the '90s Mortal Kombat. <laughs> no. uh, it's going to be the 2000 film Battle Royale. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. The best right. teen movie ever made, according to Nerd Writer, and I would be likely to. Agree. So All that's right. that'll be our next. Okay, movie. exciting. That's a good pick. I watched that for the first time in middle school, and it has stick. It stuck with me forever. But uh, I'm I'm excited to go back to it. Um, well, that's going to do it for this episode. We thank you graciously for paying us a visit in this humble mortuary. If you like what you heard, check out our back catalog on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, on the Podbean app. Rate and review the show where you can. Follow us on socials at The Media Morgue. And consider supporting us on Patreon, where we have tiers for early episode access and other bonus content. Till next time, Wayward Movie Watchers. See ya! <laughs> Bye! Bye! <laughs>